15 miles west of Kansas City is where you will find Kansas Speedway. NASCAR has competed here since the facility was built over two decades ago. And today, the stars of the Xfinity Series will end the regular season and tackle this high-speed, high-drama racetrack. With one race to go, the regular season, look down at the cut line. It would mean a lot to me to win at this level. We're searching for victory lane and we want to win. It's a massive opportunity to go out there and prove that I belong at this level. Riley Herbst, Parker Kligerman, one point separating those two. Well, this is Countdown to Green. Steve Letarte, your host, with Jeff Burton and Brad Doherty. Jeff, let's jump right into it. A battle between Parker Kligerman and the 48 and Riley Herbst in the 98 for that last spot. Let's start with the speed, the cars, the nuts and bolts. Through practice of qualifying, who do you think has the advantage? Well, one race ago, separated by only one point. So far, the advantage goes to Riley Herbst. He's out qualified Parker Kligerman. They were faster in practice than Parker Kligerman. And I think that's kind of been the trend. But what they haven't been able to do is execute. That's been the problem with this 98. Parker has been able to execute, and that is how he got the lead. But now it's one race, and who's going to make the mistake? I think there's also an advantage for Riley on pit road. Riley Herbst has a faster pit crew but can they execute at the right time? And that has been the weakness. Well, that's the nuts and bolts. You yep. made your living in professional sports, Brad. Let's talk about the human element. Which one of these drivers looks to have the mental fortitude required to battle today? You know, you go through the preparation this week. You're, you're, you're in the sim, you're in the gym, you're doing everything you need to do to be prepared. And as I look at these two guys, you see the experience in Parker. He is very, very confident that his experience will play out through the day. Riley Herbst, as, as Jeff mentioned, went through some tough times a couple of weeks ago with just mechanical things, but he is confident as well. He's got that lead. He already considers himself in the playoffs, and you heard him say, we want to win this race, so he's not thinking about points. Who has the advantage? I'll tell you in a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, the battle happens here at Kansas. It's a mile and a half. It looks straightforward. It doesn't seem to race that way. What is the challenge here? Well, it's a fun racetrack, but let's start with restarts, okay? Restarts are crazy. You have an opportunity to make big moves, but of course, when you make those big moves, there's an opportunity for big wrecks, big accidents. This track is super wide entering turn one. You try to get momentum on somebody, hang a left, and try to make move or try to jump on the outside of someone. And then when you do those things, sometimes it doesn't work out. And when it doesn't work out, we've seen massive hits here. We've seen playoff contenders have real problems in, in these races. So. You want to go push, you want to go make something happen, but you better be careful not to cross that line. Well, that's what we have to look ahead to, but let's look back. Let's look at the full picture when it comes to the playoff standings. Ten names in yellow, they're locked in. They have advanced. Daniel Hemrick will basically advance when he takes the green flag, but Riley Herbst and Parker in a points battle. But let's not forget, if you win, Brandon Jones wins, he advances, he's in. But for a closer look around that bubble battle in the 12th position, let's hear for some words from our own Nate Ryan. The bell rings for the last round of the NASCAR Xfinity Series regular season, Kansas. With one race left, there are 10 of 12 drivers locked in. The two remaining spots provisionally are held by Daniel Hemrick and Riley Herbst, who is just one single point above Parker Kligerman. Now he's battled back. The fight for the 12th spot has been a fantastic undercard to watch over the past four weeks. We're doing the right thing. We just need a little more. With Kligerman initially staggering and ailing Herbst. I don't know how we can fight for a championship if we can't even keep it running. But Darlington seemed to get the number 98 team off the ropes. Around goes Parker Kligerman. And swung a little bit of momentum back in Herbst's favor. Hey, we're going to keep it interesting, right? With one last race to set the playoffs, the gloves are off here at Kansas. Thank you, Steve. We're down here at the driver's intros with Riley. Riley, uh, what I want to know is you've been on the racetrack. You've been able to qualify the car. How confident are you now that you've been behind the wheel today? Yeah, I think we have a really fast Monster Energy car. I think we're honestly a, a couple adjustments of way of running up front and maybe winning this race, and that's our ultimate goal here today. So uh, we got to be around for all 200 laps and make adjustments on our car throughout the pit stops. But I think we got a good shot at it and uh, just keep our head on straight. Well, we hope you do, buddy. Good luck today. Dave, I think you're with the second half of this bubble battle. Junior I am, and that is Parker Kligerman. Parker, I've got to ask you, you have had the spotlight on you now. What is that like, and how do you get it done today? 
Well, I think of it as great practice for the championship four later this year. How about that? That shows you my confidence level. Uh, and I do believe that. I think it's great as a race team for us to be put in pressure pack situations like this because that's what this sport is all about. Uh, it's not allowing the moment to be bigger than you and the, your race team. And I think we've got a race team fully capable of going out here and executing at a high level. I'm going to lock in from lap one to lap 200. Uh, do my best I can in this spike like cooler Chevy and hopefully have us in position to go fight for a championship at the end of this. But, you know, I, I really think that the confidence comes from just knowing that the last 12 weeks this race team has executed such a high level that if we just do that today, we're going to be fine. Week 13 could be the one for Parker. Kim? Well, Dave, Brandon Jones is in a must-win situation, but win is something he's done before at Kansas twice, in fact. So does your record here take off some of the pressure you're feeling today? definitely does. I mean, I think I've entered this race before in a, a point situation where you almost have to run borderline conservative and you have to think about where all these people are on the track and hopefully they have early exits. And today the goal is simple. You just mentioned it. It's just to go win the race. And, you know, I think still if you go out there and you're really pacing the field well and you can get a, a stage win or something, you know, you do take those opportunities still. Um, but, yeah, we can tee ourselves up for, for a win here today and uh, definitely just one goal in our mind. So I think we've got certainly the speed. We were as fast as Xfinity 10G in, in practice and qualifying. We had some good efforts there, I think. So all that momentum is, is good for us to build into the race here, and hopefully we can keep that up and have a good end result. And, Steve, that good qualifying speed netted him a fourth-place starting position. Yeah, Brandon's going to feel very good from rolling off in the first two rows. So, Brad, I'm going to start with you. They're saying all the right <laughs> stuff, but are you buying what they're saying, or is it just a facade to kind of take the pressure off? I think it's taking the pressure off. I'm listening to Riley, and he's just status quo in his comments. You listen to Parker. He's very loquacious. He's going to talk for a long time. Those butterflies are turning, and Brandon has nothing else to say but the obvious. i got to go win the race. So they're all nervous. When the nets click up, fire up these hot rods, that all goes away and you go race. That sounds like a lot of positive self-talk to me. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like you're telling yourself yes. what it is that we're going to do here, right? And that's, that's okay, Steve. That's what you have to do as an athlete. This is a big moment for all of them. And you don't want the moment to be too big. So how do you do it? You focus on the positives. You focus on what you and your team are doing well. Parker just said it. Just we've been executing great. We need to keep doing that. Riley's goal has been win a race in the Xfinity Series. He went back to that. That's what they're doing. They're going back to their original goals to get them through this event. Brandon Jones knows he has to win. Yeah. He says he's ready to win. What are his real chances? Can Brandon Jones win today? Oh, I absolutely think Brandon Jones can win today. If he is smart, races as hard as he possibly can, like Coach Dean Smith used to say, play hard, play smart. That's what he's got to do today. Put himself in position, keep those fenders on that race car. He absolutely can win this race. Well, that's what it's going to take for Brandon Jones. But after the break, we're going to bring Dale Jr. back in, get his opinion on the pressure and the 12th spot. Who's going to get it? I'm going to make guys next to me have a real pick after oh, the commercial. Oh. The official app of NASCAR Tracks has the latest race and event information from all of your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free. John Hunter Nemechek, his first ever win in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. The win at Kansas. Hell oh, yeah, thank you guys. It means a lot, especially at Kansas. Brandon Jones trying to get his first win ever in the Xfinity Series. It's going to be Brandon Jones winning in Kansas. Holy shit, boys. I love you guys. This is incredible. I knew this was going to happen. We were going to come here and uh, have an amazing run. Checkered flag is out. Brandon Jones wins the Kansas Lottery 250. Way to battle, boys. Good job. As we keep our head in the game, we don't get excited during these races. Brandon Jones's playground now, Kansas Speedway. Well, the Xfinity Series is home of the young drivers and one of our guys on the team, Dale Jr., he knows how to win and win as a young driver, winning in the Xfinity Series and winning back-to-back -back championships. So we're going to bring Dale in. The stage is here to make the playoffs. Junior, it's got to be fun to go back and relive some of those memories, but let's talk about the pressure on these young drivers and what's at stake today. Yeah, what the regular season and the playoffs introduce is a moment during the year where you're either good enough or not good enough. The pressure to be able to make the playoffs. Everybody believes that their team is good enough, that they're good enough as a driver, but only a select few get to move forward. And several get left behind. And it's a very difficult situation to be in and a tough, tough hit to the ego because you definitely want to be in those playoffs. And when you're not, 
Nobody else cares about you. Yeah, you want to go make a stink. You want to make a, you want to get a win. You want to ruffle some feathers as a non-playoff driver. But to be honest, everybody's going to be talking about the playoffs and who's going to win that championship. You want to be in that group. All right, you heard it. I agree with Dale. You want yeah. to be in the group. So it's that time. You guys avoided the question for the whole show, but now it's time. <laughs> Start with you, Jeff. Who gets in? Who is 12th in the playoffs when we leave today? Well, what cures all in racing? And that's speed. And to me, that is Riley Herbst. Riley Herbst in a 98 car. They unloaded with good speed here. They've been faster than Parker Kligerman most of the year, been faster than the nine car most of the year. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to speed. I'm going Riley Herbst. I think that's fair, but I'm going to tell you what. The guy at the end of the day, it's going to be like Babe Ruth. It's going to be like that walk-off home run. He's going to get his third of his six wins here today. And that's going to be Brandon Jones. I think Brandon Jones is going to win this race today and upset the apple cart. So you have him going in with walk-off win. He's knocking it out of the park. He's going to win today, and he goes into the playoffs. Oh, well, I know you don't have Brandon Jones winning because you have Riley moving forward. So let's talk about the race win. Who do you think? Give me a name or two to watch. Who do you think the favorites are today? Uh, hey, pole sitter, Justin Algar. Uh, to me, he's he's been fast the whole practice sitting on the pole. I'm going with Algar. Well, and you got to think of John Hunter Nemechek. Announced Austin this Hill. week that he's going to Cup. Austin Hill is yeah. fast. The Xfinity Series is full of stars. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Full of youngsters as well. You see right there, Sammy Smith in that black and gold car yes, will sir. roll off row two. There's your pick, Brandon Jones. Yes, He'll sir. be right there in the next row back. What kind of race? Are we going to see the same chaos we've seen here before? No doubt about it. Restarts will be crazy. Guys will be getting after it, and it's going to be fun to watch. No out of bounds. They're going to use every inch. And every inch will be used, and it's going to be fun to watch. Well, let's go trackside for ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you're able and remove your hats as the American Legion 153 Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, please welcome from Blue Valley Church, Pastor Micah Hayes. Would you all pray with me? Father, we love you and we thank you for your grace and your goodness in bringing us here today to this amazing speedway for we know that everything we have comes from you and your hand. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be here and we ask for your safety and your provision for the drivers, <clears throat> for the crews, for the fans, and for all the workers today to protect them and enable them to entertain and, and have a great time as we get to enjoy racing to the glory of your name. And Lord, most importantly, we thank you for Jesus, for we know that it's through him we have life everlasting, and it's in his name we pray, amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the Youth Chorus of Kansas City. On the other side of the break, the driver's strapping in the command. The engines will fire. I'm at a head enjoy race caller Rick Allen, Jeff Burton, and Dale Jr. after the break. They're running fast, crossing county lines just to make my name in the city. I'm taking it now. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I'm taking it now. 
There's one spot still to be determined in the 12 driver playoff field. It's the NASCAR Xfinity Series Kansas Lottery 300. Beautiful shot of the racetrack there as I stand next to coach or pre race show host and <laughs> crew chief Steve Letart, Rick Allen with you. So, Kansas Speedway, why has this racetrack been so difficult? Well, because it's, it's the magical mix of high speed and low grip. So, to be good at Kansas, it is full commitment. Tons of time on wide open throttle, tons of mid corner speed, but you're doing that leaning against basically a broken crutch. At any time, it can slide sideways and you can lose control. That's Kansas in a nutshell, and you have to do it while racing around all the other cars, all the other competitors. All right, Kim Kuhn, how about the double zero and Cole Custer? He's got double duty today. Well, Rick, with two wins, Cole Custer already has a spot in the Xfinity Series playoffs. So what does the team hope to accomplish this afternoon? Cole said they absolutely cannot let their guard down, even though they're already in the playoffs. They show up to races to win. And recently, the results have matched that mantra. Cole has finished seventh or better the last four races. This team looking for a win this afternoon, which would continue that momentum. And Dave, give them those five valuable playoff points. Kim, John Hunter Nemechek has dueling headlines this week. First of all, his run to the Xfinity Series playoffs on the strength of five wins on the season. Could he make it six today? We shall see. The other big headline, of course, he's headed back to the NASCAR Cup Series in 2024. The team, Legacy Motor Club, is run by no, none other than seven-time champion Jimmy Johnson. So as he finishes up today and the rest of the playoffs here, he's surely looking forward to next year in the Cup Series. Well, when he fires his engine here, he's going to be refocused on the Xfinity Series Championship. Why don't all the rest of the drivers join him right now? And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome, with a big rock chalk, the University of Kansas Jayhawks student athletes. Drivers, are your engine! Engines are fired down here on the grid. This 48 of Parker Klingerman starting in 15th place is going to work really, really hard this first stage. Try to climb into that top 10 and get those important stage points. The driver he's trying to catch and beat today, the, 90, the 98 of Raleigh Herbst is starting in eighth place right now, already in the top 10. So if he can hold this position, he's going to be watching that 48 in his rear view, trying to keep him out of the top 10 as we go into this first stage. But they got the whole race to run today. It's going to be pretty incredible to watch these drivers try to get to victory lane. Who can do it? The green flag is coming up next. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Progressive. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Visit Progressive.com. Car starting to roll off of pit road now. Let's see if we can dial up the driver of the number 21, Austin Hill, who right now is leading the regular season championship points. Hey, Austin, it's the guys in the NBC booth. You got a copy? Uh, I got you. Well, man, a great regular season. Four wins already. The chance for one more today. How do you use this final race to get prepped for the playoffs? Well, I think it's, you know, one thing for us, we're, we're struggling a little bit here today uh, in practice. I fought a really loose balance, so um, I think this is a great way for, you know, if we're in the, in the playoffs and we have the same situation as uh, showing our resilience and uh, showing that we can, we can still make something out of, out of nothing. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to minimize the stakes all day. Everybody's been doing a really good job on pit road. My pit crew's been phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I mean, more than anything, just being able to minimize the stakes all day, taking what the car will give you. If we have an eighth place car today, then, then let's go run eighth. Let's not put ourselves in a box, um, try to overdo anything, and uh, make sure we're, we're there at the end for all these touring laps. It's going to be a hot, slick one today. We're going to move moving around a lot, so got to keep up with the racetrack. Well, you talk about the great regular season and moving forward. Well, you are got a little bit of a head start here. Looks like you have a chance to close in on that regular season championship. But bring it here to Kansas. So many storylines here. The place is crazy every time we come. What are the challenges to this mile and a half? 
Yeah, it's, it's really challenging. You know, as rubber gets laid down, you start moving around, you're going to run. You're going to see cars running on the bottom all the way to the top and everything in between. So uh, being able to keep up with that, keep up with the racetrack, you know, as rubber's getting laid down, what's that doing to your car? Do you need to be in it? Do you need to be out of it? Um, you know, you're going to be running the fence at times, just being able to run the wall and uh, use that air, you know, the right way on the, with the right recorder. And, uh, there's just a lot of things that Kansas brings to the table on uh, that the driver can do inside the race car. And, you know, with the tire fall off, it's really, really going to play a factor. So managing your tires from the front end of the run to the, to the back end of the run. So uh, hopefully we can do all that today and uh, keep this finish Chevrolet up front. All right, appreciate you taking the time. Good luck, man. Appreciate it. Great insight from Austin Hill there. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Justin Allgaier and Sammy Smith. They're going to make up row number one. Justin Allgaier, the last time he won the pole was in Charlotte, and he went on to win that race. Yeah, we just talked to Austin Hill back there in row five. Just in front of him, you have Riley Herbst. We're going to talk so much about that bubble battle. 12th position in the playoffs. Yeah, his closest competitor who's fighting for that 12th spot is Parker Kligerman, who starts there in row eight. Sheldon Creed is on his outside, which will be interesting because Sheldon Creed's still fighting for a win in this series. Yeah, and I think that's what you're looking for with a bunch of these drivers here. You look at Parker Retzloff back in row 13. His teammate has a win. He's trying to break through, get his first career win. All the way back, 38 cars starting in the field today. Let's go back to Kim on the driver of the number 10, which is Daniel Hemrick today. Right, Rick. Daniel Hemrick clenches a spot in the driver's playoffs as soon as he rolls off the grid. He already did that. He is clinched. But we've seen him in the number 11 car all year long. So why is he in the 10 car? Well, that car has already qualified for the owner's playoffs. Colleg wanted their veteran driver in it for the title run, but thought it would be best to make that switch this weekend. One race to go before the playoffs start, so that gives Daniel and this team a week to get into the groove together before the real pressure starts for them, Dave, next weekend at Bristol. Kim, in 13 starts here at Kansas, Justin Allgaier is winless. He does have wins on 16 different tracks in the Xfinity Series. It used to be 15 until he won for the first time at Daytona two races ago. Used to be 14 until he won for the first time at Mile and a Half Charlotte in May. Rick already mentioned that he started from pole then. He starts from pole here. Could be a winner on his 17th different track when the checkered flag falls today, Rick. Yeah, Dave, and he has been impressive. Restarts have always been the thing that have caught up to him. Steve, walk us through the race analysis. Well, 200 laps, 300 miles. The first stage, 45 laps. Second stage, also 45 laps. The final stage, much longer at 110. Uh, they can run 55 to 60 on fuel. So I imagine we're going to see a set of tires after stage one, a set after stage two. They have four sets available. So then that final stage is really when decisions have to be made. Do we see cautions? When do you pit under green? It'll be decision time. Out in front of the field, the Toyota GR Supra. That's the official pace car for today's race. All right, let's listen in to a couple pep talks, and we'll start with the 98 team. I mean, we get a dog sticker today. Need to see on danger stuff here. Have some fun. Fill it up. Four. Thank you. Quick, just want to say thank you guys for the hard work all season. Appreciate the opportunity. You know, this is uh, what we're meant to do have opportunities like this. We just do what we've done the last 12 weeks. We're going to go race for a championship. Go race for a championship. That's the goal right now of 12 drivers who, as we look at the point standings, uh, we heard Kim mention that Daniel Hemrick just by rolling off is going to be locked in based on points, but it's Riley Herbst, Parker Kligerman, and then Brandon Jones is still in the mix. If you win, you can advance. Yeah, so Jones would need a win when it comes to Herbst and Kligerman, when it comes down to points. Remember, every position at the end of the race is a point. You also can receive points. The top 10 receive points at the end of those stages I mentioned. 10 if you win it, one point for 10th. So, you know, right away, 45 laps into the race, the kind of the score is going to be kept, right? It's going to be who has the lead? Did either of those two score points? And right off the start here, you see the seven car, Justin Algar, the red car, the outside lane. He could pick either lane he wanted because he sat on the pole. He immediately went to the top. I think this is something you'll see all day long. The top is going to be preferred on the restart. Two by two, the last race of the regular season to determine who the 12 drivers will be that will fight for a championship. 
as you mentioned Steve points available not only stage points but also playoff points which these drivers if they're in the playoffs they can carry them through the rounds all the way to get themselves into the championship four at the end of the season. Justin Allgaier on the outside. Sammy Smith on the inside. We're racing at Kansas. Oh, we got a crash in the back of the field. Car in the wall into turn one. Another car smoking. Tire rubs. Contact. 78, 78 car there. Anthony Alfredo in the 78. See the tire mark on that left side. Somebody came up the racetrack. There was some contact. That's where the tire rub is on the left front. Not quite sure which car. There's the 38 was the one that got nosed into the wall. Nick Lights in the 38. We saw him spin in practice earlier today. His first Xfinity race. Late model racer. Did he not have a spotter? Was it almost even with him? See the right front tire a little bit of a mark. Uh, Looks like he's been in the wall with the right front tire. Here's a look here. Squeeze into the wall. Yep. Trying to enter turn one. Just didn't know they were clear. Right there. Ooh. Yeah, that's no good. I can understand the frustration. So we've seen this story before. Haven't completed the first lap, and already a caution has come out. We'll have a restart when we return. Fans, download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the action with free live scoring. There's in-car cameras as well as a radio broadcast. Just search NASCAR in your app store. You can start a free trial today. Many heroes are being honored this weekend on the side of the cars. Kim Kuhn, what about the two car? That's right, Rick. You might not recognize some of the names on the cars because to your point these drivers are running the names of some inspiring stories and for Sheldon Creed riding along with him is Pam Yarbrough from Sebring Florida nominated by Kenny Kerouac her family says Pam is a hero and has fought cancer like a beast since 2019 and continues to fight the battle for the finish line of a life that is cancer free and they selected Sheldon I love this because just like Pam is fighting cancer like a beast they said Sheldon Creed is a beast on the racetrack. Sheldon looking for his first NASCAR Xfinity Series win, and if he did it today, it would be in honor of Pam Yarbrough. Pretty cool what they're doing for all of these uh, cancer victims. Uh, some have survived and have won the battle, uh, but a lot of people have been nominated because of the fight, uh, the heroes that they were fighting uh, that cancer. And again, Martin Shrex Jr. Foundation and the NASCAR Foundation uh, both helping out to honor those heroes. So the caution has come out on the very first lap and we'll get lined back up again as they go to the choose to decide inside versus outside. Dave, how about the one? Yeah, let me Sam Mayer. He'll go off maybe 15th, maybe a little bit better, depending on the choose. And he's been two-time winner in the last six races, Rick, but the, the team's concerned with the four non-wins and the mistakes that were made there, some of them by the 20-year-old driver himself. He is locked into the playoffs, which start next week. So a solid mistake-free race is the goal to set up what could be a deep playoff run. Well, it was just last week, Rick, where the one and Parker Kligerman had an issue. Parker was running about 12th. Sam Mayer late in the race, just a mistake, just misjudges his speed. There's no other way to put this. It's purely on the driver of the one, and he admitted it. Gets in the back of the 48. Parker ends up finishing outside the top 20. This costs him 10 or 12 points in this points battle. We heard earlier today that Sam said, hey, on the way home, I called Parker. We talked about it. Uh, doesn't make Parker feel any better about it, but here they are lined up, nose to tail on the racetrack. Yeah, before Darlington, Parker Kligerman entered that race 20 points above Riley Herbst. At the end of the day, he was a point behind. As we ride along with Parker Kligerman and the big machine spike light coolers on board. And yeah, these drivers had that one start. Now they know a little bit more about the car. I would expect to see them get more aggressive on this restart with a little bit more information. <laughs> more aggressive. We'll see how it goes this time. The restart for Kansas.
Three wide, four wide in the back of this pack. And drifting up the racetrack, a very wide multiple groove track, and they're taking advantage of all of them as they go down the back stretch. John Hunter Newtek through the middle there, three wide, gains a few spots. Goes after his teammate, Sammy Smith, sitting there in third. John Hunter now in fourth in that white number 20, just in front of Josh Berry. Josh Berry in qualifying, tagged the wall, coming out of four. And there are the 98 and 48, very close to each other. Again, every position is a point. Yeah, Riley Herbst is on the bottom of that restart. It did not work out for him at all, starting on the bottom. And Parker Kligerman right there on the inside sees it going after him. Yeah, Herb's going the wrong direction here after starting eighth. <laughs> door to door. You knew it was going to be this way for this race. And before Riley Herbst knew it, the words three wide middle came from spotter Tim Fiedler. Well, that means he was in the middle of what could have been a mess. Spotter said, take care of it. Riley did. Now he's got this challenge from Parker. Top of the screen to battle for the lead. Cole Custer running the top. He's got a lot of momentum. Seven needs to recognize that. Move up the racetrack. Start running that higher line. Before long, he's going to be battling door to door with Custer for the lead. And this is a difficult decision for Riley Herbst on the bottom screen. What do you do? He, that's what he wanted. He wanted to be able to jump on the outside of the one car. You see Parker goes to the bottom, but typically on the bottom of the racetrack, you will not have the momentum on corner exit. So they both split the one car. See the straight gain that Riley Herbst has down the back straightaway from that top momentum. So that worked out exactly the way he wanted it to, and Parker got by the one as well. Derek Krause coming into the picture in the 11 behind that 48 as things are heating up for the third spot. Brandon Jones is caught up to Josh Berry as now Parker Kligerman's trying to get by on the high side. So these restarts are great opportunities for drivers to pick up spots. Well, watch Sheldon Creed. Seven spots he made happen. Jumped on the outside of the 39 car, Ryan Sieg. And watch the momentum he's able to carry. See the bottom, how he gets bottled up. And now here he is just rolling, picking up spots. Great job by Sheldon. Seven spots in about two corners. Kligerman's fallen behind. The one of Sam Mayer now. Chandler Smith struggling in that 16 car. Trying to regroup. She's right on board with Parker here. He's got a car underneath him. He's struggling now, losing a few spots here, guys. You can hear the throttle. Just not able to fully commit on corner exit. Team built him a new car for this race and the rest of the season. Parker was hoping that it would be the best. The best car that they have built up to this point. Yeah, rarely do we see brand new cars in the Xfinity Series, a little bit lower budget than the Cup teams on Sunday. But when you hear new, you know, it's not just fresh, it's all the little things. Everything you've learned over the year, you can kind of implement from the start. You would hope it just has more capability. Not that it drives better, it's just when it's a little loose or it's a little tight, it just naturally goes faster, more overall grip. Of having to play with the throttle there as he came out of four. I think this is a difficult time, Junior, for all the dogs. Caution on the track. Yeah. And debris. There it is. So already the second caution has come out 12 laps into this race. A couple of pieces right there on the racetrack. What well, the caution means a restart. We'll see how it goes. There's a little bit of the debris that came off the car. We'll have a restart when we return. Tomorrow, 2.30 p.m. Eastern on NBC and streaming on Peacock, the NTT IndyCar Series will crown their champion. The season finale at Laguna Seca. Alex Below is going to be presented his second Astor Cup. He secured the championship last week with a win at Portland. So the 98, Riley Herbst, their team talking about the situation they're in right now on the radio. Couldn't turn the wheel for some reason. You're, you're right where you need to be. Only one more race today. 
four spots behind your three spots, so you're right where you need to be. Don't be too hard on yourself. And your rhythm there, you're pretty good, so. Timmy, I love you, but we're racing 38 other cars. I want to win this race, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, that's conversation with Riley Herbs and Timmy Fito with a spotter. And Riley, Steve, we keep hearing him say this. I'm here to win this race. Like, he is... He has gone all in on winning this race, not getting ta caught up in this point battle. So, you know, I could argue both sides of this because I like the approach of Riley Herbst until it costs him the playoffs. Until that aggression is what eliminates him when today the goal needs to be to outrun the 48 of Parker Kligerman. Um, you know, this is a full body of work. This is 26 races to here, right? 25, this being race 26. So I love what Riley is saying, which is I want to win at this level, and I appreciate it, but, you know, both sides have a little bit of a good argument. Um, in the end, though, what I will say about Riley's opinion is if he does make the playoffs, is great, but if you want to continue to advance, you need to be a winning car in the Xfinity right. Series. Got to look at the big picture. Right now, big picture has the seven of Justin Allgaier running up front, Dave. Rick, I want to show you some video from the caution. This is Justin Allgaier after the caution came out, having led every lap so far, running down to the apron of the racetrack. Listen to the radio. Left front's got a brake pad stuck under the splitter. You might have got it out, but I need you to get down to the flat and get the nose up. Now, it's still there. They're not concerned. What they don't want it to do is to come off and go under the tire. But when you're the leader, Rick, you pick up everything first. Steve, you ever seen that? Something I've stuck to the splitter. I've seen about everything. Um, rarely do you notice it during the race. Though. Yeah. Sometimes when the car comes back in, you take a look. It's definitely there. Now, the concern is I don't think it's going to hurt the car very much, but that is a really easy spot to get the air hose caught on a pit stop. So we'll have to see if they think they need to address it during the pit stop or if they just let it be. They did not do the choose that time by, so they will be doing that next time around. Again, it's all guy or Custer. John Hunter Nemechek, again the news, John Hunter Nemechek will be racing the Cup Series next year. Uh, another father-son Cup Series uh, duo there as far as front row Joe. Joe Nemechek raced for many years in the Cup Series. Well, you know, it's that one here. I mean, there's Joe Nemechek, 2004 Kansas. And look down there in the bottom right. That is a young John Hunter with a big smile looking up at his dad holding the trophy. That's pretty cool. And talked about the father son combos. I mean, you think about so many families a part of this sport uh, that have raced at the highest level. The Allisons, the Bakers, and a long, long list here. Uh, interesting, you, you look at like Lee Petty and Richard Petty. You would never think, well, it was father son, but sure enough, Lee Petty. Uh, Kyle Petty's grandfather, Adam's great great grandfather, or great grandfather. Uh, pretty amazing the careers that we have seen from fathers and sons at the highest level of the sport. Dave, what about the driver of the 16 right now? That's Chandler Smith. He is in the playoffs, and I just talked to team president Chris Rice, who was walking by. I said, What's up with the 16? He said, It's blowing up. He's going to go behind the wall. Wow, seeing this car come down pit road, wasn't quite sure why he was coming to pit road, giving up a track position. But apparently a very serious issue with the cars. He's going to make the dreaded left turn back to the garage. Won at Richmond earlier this year, so locked into the playoffs, but not the way he wants to end the regular season. The back half of this year for that team has been a tough one. Certainly some hard lessons learned. He's a great young driver. Showed a lot of promise out of the gate this year, but they hope to get things turned around with the playoffs starting. And, and that's what you hate about this type of race for a young driver is, you know, you lose it. Like you learn almost nothing by being here. Uh, very limited practice. Uh, did get to run a few laps, you know, before the problem, but you just, you just give up an essentially an entire race. Two by two again, as we get ready for another restart. Justin Allgaier has made that outside line work for him. So we saw Sheldon Creed earlier pick up a lot of spots. Don't think for a minute the spotters didn't notify their drivers that it worked for somebody. Be looking for more people to jump to the very top. 
All in line. As they go back up through the gears. It's a great push on the inside there from Sammy Smith. Three wide right now fighting for the sixth spot as oh. starting to fall back a bit there was the 25 and so Brett Moffitt had some issues. Yeah, he got in a little bit of trouble there, Rick. Everybody gave him a break, allowed him to get a hold of his race car. Battle out front still getting sorted out. Cole Custer fought hard to try to get that position. Oh, the one car spinning around on the front straightaway. Sam Mayer right in front of a few cars. And even the 91 got into it, Kyle Weatherman. They get it rolling, right side is caved in, right around all the fingers. Third caution Everything's already. Just keep it on the lead lap. Looked like he was on the inside. Off the I, don't, I don't know what happened. Not quite sure, it looked like he might have been on the inside and got loose up, up underneath somebody, but spun the car around, contact with the outside wall. Weatherman comes, comes through with nowhere to go. Hard, heavy damage to the front of that car. We know there's a lot of damage to the right side of Sam Mayer's car. Yeah, that that and the splitter. He, he run, run the nose into the wall, bit that front splitter up a little bit. I was going to say, don't let the left side of the one fuel, fool you, because it looks good. AMR safety team immediately to Kyle Weatherman. And, and this is Kansas. I mean, it's hard to explain, but it's always so chaotic on board with the 48 of Parker Kligerman. Oh, there you go. So the one car was chasing the two off turn four. The two catches the fence, you know, doesn't want to be there. And as he kind of corrects down the track, it spits the one out. And then behind him, just contact with the 91. So as Sam Mayer in the one slides up the racetrack, nowhere for Kyle Weatherman in the 91 to go, but into the passenger side door. NASCAR Fan Rewards is free to join. You can earn points by watching races, entering trivia, playing fantasy, buying race tickets, and more. Save your points, trade them in for free tickets, autographed merchandise, and much, much more. Visit NASCAR.com slash Fan Rewards. So Sam Mayer is at the back of the hauler right now as we're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series Kansas Lottery 300. <laughs> Well, we talked about restarts and how important they would be. Well, check out Parker Kligerman. He's on the outside. He chose the outside. And look what happens. He jumps to that third lane. The bottom has a problem. The 25 of Moffitt has a problem. He stacks the bottom up. And there he is rolling on the outside. Picked up six spots. It all happened right here. Watching Riley Herps on that restart. It did not work out for him. He's in that bottom groove, and when that line gets checked up, watch the yellow car have a little bit of an issue right here. Everybody has to lift. A little bit of contact, bumper tag. Let's listen to what Riley and the team had to say. Should have went with my gut. Sorry, buddy. Stay in there. We're going to be fine. Long way. We are on lap 19 of 200. Let's keep it together here. You've done this before trying to keep his driver's head on straight as he's, he's he's analyzing every move he's making out there and that can be a little bit of pro, a little bit problematic and uh they're just trying to let him know hey man put that in the rearview mirror don't worry about it we got another restart coming up try to make it up kaz Grala and the toyota onboard looking over at riley herbs before the restart it's such a difficult decision when you come to that choose cone the bottom or the top and what you're trying to do is everybody wants to start on the top i mean it's better but they you out. give up yeah. a whole row yeah. you know do you let do you lose two or three spots to pick the top and so those are decisions that you have to make and and when he said i should have trusted my gut that is that's what he's talking about is i should have picked the outside i should have given up a row given up some positions but had the preferred lane and you know that's easy to say now after the fact when it didn't work out but it's a whole other thing to give up a whole row just to take the top. And Kim, what about the two of Sheldon Creed running eighth right now? 
Yeah, some issues for Sheldon Creed. The team told him the rear bumper cover is broken. They were going to bring him down to fix it, but they think it's hanging on enough that they can make it to the end of stage one. Then when they do stop, they'll try and get some bear bun on there, but issues early for Sheldon Creed. You can see that left rear bumper bar is bent down. It's from this contact right here. From that angle, it's hard to tell how that happened, whether the two hits the ball first or whether the one arrow-wise forces the two into the fence. But you can see that bumper bar right there from the contact of Sam Mayer. I think you'll be okay, guys. I don't know aerodynamically if it's bothering that left rear quarter panel, but that bumper bar being bent down there shouldn't be much concern as long as it's not moving, shaking, looking like it's about to come off. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it'll hurt it arrow-wise. Um, maybe a push on a restart could, could give it maybe a little sideways, but if they were that far to your left rear, it's probably not going to be good either way. Coming up on the choose. So the lights go out on the pace car. And once again, all guy goes high. See, so far they've split. That's the first car. Sheldon was the first car. He could have gone to the bottom, but he didn't. He went to the top and gave up a row. And those are the decisions you have to make. And we know why Creed's done it. We saw him pick up spots by running the top. We also saw him hit the wall by running the top, but he just feels like he can be on he can be on offense and in turn one on the outside. Dave, we saw the 16 of Chandler Smith in the garage as well. What are they trying to do? Rick, he's staying behind the wheel for right now. They've replaced every spark plug on this eight-cylinder engine. They've replaced the spark plug wires and anything else that they can replace easily and quickly. And then it's a fire it up and see if it goes. And if it doesn't go, that's the day. It sounds to me like they think they're maybe down a cylinder and. Um, you know, but if you're going to take the top half the engine apart, start looking at valve springs, you're all done. You're going to go in, go in the hauler. But you can change the spark plugs. Not only see if the spark plug is an issue, but look at the spark plug, and you'll actually see some aluminum or something on the spark plug. Let you know that that cylinder has a, a much bigger issue. And in the garage, working on it, they're not on the DVP, so they can be in there as long as they want. Yeah, they Get weren't in an accident. Um, it's just a mechanical issue. Um, multiple laps down, so they're definitely off the pace. But to Jeff's point about the practice of a race, they would probably love to be able to go out and make some laps. So once again, it's Allgaier and Custer making up row one. We'll see if Custer can fight to the inside of that seven once again. Custer has the advantage into one, but now the momentum coming back for the seven of Allgaier. Josh Berry had a little issue there on the inside, losing a few spots. That bottom is hard to hang on to as the battle for the lead keeps going. Nemechek to the bottom of Custer. John Hunter Nemechek in the 20 now looking for second. This is where the battle is. This is very intense right here. Riley Herbst getting underneath Jeff Burton. Now three he's going to be three bottom, wide down the back. Bottom. On three the bottom, bottom. Look, at the bottom. Gonna bottom. look at the momentum he's going to lose on the bottom. He's going to have to really no, no, drive three into bottom. three hard. As Josh Berry behind him in the eight. Jeff Burton in the 27 right there in the middle of the track. And now Riley starts stuck on the bottom. They're ganging up on him on the outside. He's going to have to find a way to get into back to the top. Going to go up the racetrack right here. Not going to quite clear the 45, but he's going to try to fall in line, maybe side draft. Nope, he's going to get in behind there. Raja Karuth looking back now on Riley Herbs at circle.com on board. Raja also spun around earlier in practice as now their little contact made. Riley Herbs got into the left rear quarter panel. That was tight right here there. Let's see if Riley can clear him into one. If he can, then he might can get by Josh Berry as well. There's Riley Herb showing a little bit more speed. Currently running in the 16th spot. And Parker Kligerman on that restart, he did a great job. He gained a spot, so he's in eighth. Riley's all the way back in 15th. And you see on the lower left of your screen, the playoff bubble. Where they're running, Kligerman is in, Herbst is out. 
This is on the restart down into turn one. The eight car has a little issue right here. Parker Kligerman has to check up just a little bit. Gets really loose almost into the left rear quarter panel. Great move right here. Oh, oh. there is contact. Good job by Parker there. This is the hard racing off the of turn four there for position. It's only 16, with all the cautions, it's only 16 laps to go in this stage. 15 now, so can Kligerman hang on and get stage points? And Riley Herbst not running in the top 10, so wouldn't receive stage points. Running 15th, as we see Brandon Jones moving toward the front. Yeah, Brandon's been kind of running around the top six the whole race. Nobody's had really anything for the top four cars, but it's a great battle right here for fifth. Austin Hill in the 21 just behind these two. Jeff Burton goes all the way to the white line on the apron. And as he does that, Brett Moffitt tries to make the pass on the high side. Moffitt's going to get by, and the 98 of Herbst is going to have some good momentum here. Herbst staying just a little bit low there to keep some no air on the nose. The 10 car with an issue, though. Hembrick. You know, the 16 had a problem. Now the 10 car may be slowing down. Looks like it's speed on the straightaway. Another engine problem, possibly. And the 16 is about to go by him. It looks Chandler like Smith it, and the 16 is going to pass the 10. And it looks like it's at full speed. So that tells me that whatever the issue was on the 16, they have found a remedy. The 10, though, continues to be off the pace. So the 16 is being scored 13 laps down, but he's back on the racetrack, and now his teammate, Daniel Hemrick, seems to be having an issue. Everybody chasing Allgaier. My customer was enjoying her new car when her windshield cracked. <gasps> My car. She didn't take it to the dealer. She scheduled with Safelite. We have the latest technology for the newest vehicles. And we do more replacements and recalibrations than anyone else. Thank you so much. Don't wait. Schedule now. Safe Light Repair, Safe Light Replace. It's back. Applebee's all-you-can-eat boneless wings, just $12.99. Mara, are you sure you don't want to go bowling with us tonight? Yeah, no. There's my little marzipan! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my daughter gives the best hugs! <laughs> We're just passing through on our way to the Jazz Jamboree. <laughs> <laughs> and we wanted to thank America's number one motorcycle insurer for saving us money. <laughs> Mara, your parents are... Exactly like me. I know, right? Well, cherish your friends and loved ones. Let's roll, daddy-o. <laughs> Let's boogie-woogie. It's orientation day. Welcome to the team. Who wants to race? I like this team. Be part of something greater. Toyota, let's go places. There comes a time in every dip's life when it's ready to leave the slow cooker, even buffalo chicken dip. So we put juicy chicken, buffalo sauce, and melty cheese in a portable crispy golden shell. Runaway dip, you're free now. Sonic 299 Buffalo Chicken Dip Bites. There's no place like Kansas. Great plans in the air. This is a tough track. The race for the NASCAR championship runs 185 miles per hour straight through the heartland. He's going to do it! He's going to win in Kansas! Drivers, start your engines. The NASCAR playoffs continue in Kansas on USA. Daniel Hemrick in the 10 is an issue, and he missed his pit stall. And so crews are pushing him back, see if they can get him in the stall to check out what the issue is. He was slow on the racetrack. So now that he's in his stall, the crew will go to work trying to figure out what the problem is. And the 
seem to be tackling something on the left side, so you wonder if it's a battery issue. The battery in these cars, that looked like a battery, the blue area coming over pit wall. The battery is kept in front of the left rear tire, and Hembrick missed his stall because he went to the 11 stall. He normally drives the 11, a car number switch for Colleg. I would have swap the signs back they better have that conversation for next week and on track riley herbst is closing in on the 26th for 10th which is important because remember the top 10 will receive points here in six more laps from stage one comes to a finish yeah riley herbst is really fast so he's got the top four car on speed the restarts have not worked out for him parker clinger has done a much better job of taking advantage of restarts and has gotten in front of riley Able to break into the top 10 there. Kim, I believe you're standing by with the driver of the one. That's right, Rick. Sam Mayer out of the race early. Walk us through what happened out there. Honestly, I don't really know what happened. I need to see a real replay to tell, but just an unfortunate deal for our, our Huck Chevrolet. We we work our tails off for this, and it's just it's kind of a racing deal. I thought I gave him more room than that. He bounced off the wall a little bit. Just, just a racing deal. Unfortunate for our Huck Chevrolet. We were as fast as Xfinity 10G. Just, uh, just needed to survive a little longer. That's Sam Mayer, that's... Playoff point up for grabs right here. John Hunter Nemechek trying to take the lead away from Allgaier. He's got some great speed in the momentum. Down the front straightaway. Justin's gonna try to side draft, but I don't know if he oh. can get there. I think Nemechek... Look at this, up the racetrack he went. Did he go into that turn oh, too hard? Loose. Justin just didn't appreciate the way he raced him on the front straight away. I think Justin was trying to get back to his bumper there and just move him around. Watch now he head. dives in there for the slide job, but he can't make it work. Yeah, that's not going to work. That 20 is fast. Here comes the double zero Cole Custer into the battle. Only three laps to go now. Is Allgaier going to lose second? Cole's to the outside now. He's going to have to give Cole the top of the racetrack. Big momentum for the double zero now. He's going to pass on the outside. Justin's going back to third place here. Algar falls all the way back to third. So right there. Yeah, run that high line. Too free on entry. Too tight middle. There you go. There's the problems, the balance issues on the seven. Car just kind of went away all at once here at right the end of the stage. And 98 just went out by the 11 of Derek Krause. That's another spot, another point. Parker Kligerman running in the seventh spot. Riley Herbst has moved up to ninth. That was a great battle for the lead. It was a lot of fun to watch. Riley Herbst is fast. He just, they got to find a way to do better on restarts. Riley Herbst two tenths of a second faster that last lap than Parker Kligerman. Yeah, that was with a pass. So, like, this next lap is going to be really fast for Riley Herbst. I mean, he's run the two car down. John Hunter Nemechek rolling. Yeah, down the back stretch for the final time of stage one. Parker Klingerman's going to have an opportunity in another spot, possibly. Right on the back bumper of the 21 car. For sixth place. John Hunter Nemechek out of turn four, and he will win stage one. It's his eighth stage win this year. Tied for the most with Allgaier. We see Austin Hill. Will Kligerman get him at the line? He does. On your clear three checker. Riley Herbst finishes in ninth. Kligerman in sixth. So the first battle has been won by Parker Kligerman. Able to get a couple more points than Riley Herbst as they fight for that final spot in the playoffs. NBC Sports coverage of NASCAR is brought to you by Credit One Bank, a credit card company and by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Fans in the infield having a good time. The win in stage one by John Hunter Nemechek gives him another playoff point. I'm just trying to find out where they were because that's, man, looks like that's the place, place to go hang out right there. Yeah. Having a good time. Yeah, 
they're right there. I see them in turns one and two. Look at them. It's a nice little set. That's an A-plus rail. What about, what's the stuffed animal there on the front? Well, Rick, there's certain things we're just going to let be. Is that a Nebraska end on the side? It of was. It? it was. Oh, right. A little it bit was, of a rough day for Nebraska. It was a tough day, but Buffalo's getting the advantage there. It's unusual. And on their way to Pitt Road, and first to you will be Kim. Top left, Parker Kligerman, the first goal of the day, gets stage points. That was accomplished. P6 in that stage. Parker said he just needed help on entry. Center threw off, though. The car was good. It's going to be a wedge adjustment. You see right there, air pressure, four tires, snow go fuel. Cole Custer also in with a wedge adjustment. He said he needed help on the top lane, Dave. Two stage points, hard fought for Riley Herbst. He'll get adjustments on his car, but he said, don't take too long. I'd rather have the track position. He uh, gets Goodyear tires on all four corners. So does John Hunter Nemechek. Another stage win for him. His car was not bad. Pretty close. Let's see where they come off pit road. 98 and 48 are going to come off side by side again. So Kligerman's going to lose a spot. Herbs grabs a spot. Creed gets a couple. And that first pit stall. Pretty close for working out for John Hunter Nemechek. happening right now is playoff number one for the inaugural Super Motocross World Championship playoffs from Z-Max Dragway in Concord, North Carolina. This is crossing the racetrack. The second playoff will be September 16th from Chicagoland at 8 o'clock on Peacock. And then the championship is September 23rd. That's from the L.A. Coliseum. That will be on USA. Yesterday, Ty Gibbs went over to check out what was happening there at Z-Max and was able to hang out with his North Carolina friend, Cooper Webb, both Monster Energy drivers. And again, that was practice yesterday, so Ty Gibbs took advantage of it. Kim. Well, for young Sammy Smith, he's been involved in wrecks the last six races, so this team took this week as a complete Reset. In fact, crew chief Jeff Mendering told me they talked about everything from restarts to pit stops to putting yourself in the best situation and avoiding compromising situations. It's paid off so far. They qualified in the second position, Dave. Finished that stage one in P5. Riley Hurts grabbed a couple of stage points, and I would describe his emotions right now as slightly annoyed. Listen. What do you need help with on the restarts? I just need, I think, myself to calm down, everybody else to calm down. Just need to take a step back, I think, everybody collectively. Calm on a restart. Let's see if that works, Rick. I'm not sure that's a possibility here in Kansas. Calm on a restart. We're about to find out. We've seen chaos. Nemechek on the inside. Cole Custer on the outside. Stage two underway. Sheldon Creed out of line, trying that high line again. See if he can keep the momentum up, get a couple more positions. John Hunter Nemechek out in front of Custer, and it's Allgaier. Brandon Jones in the nine running in that fourth spot. Comes Austin Hill in the 21. Goes to the inside of his teammate, Sheldon Creed in the two. Austin and his team talked about their car. Not really 100% in love with how the car drove in practice, but we've always seen this from them. They, they figure out a way to close these races out, finish strong. Right now, kind of battling in the backside of the top 10. Close there for Sammy Smith and Brandon Jones. Justin Algar trying to get around this double zero on the bottom of the racetrack. It's going to be tough to do down here in turn one and two. Custer will have the momentum down the back straightaway. Justin maybe try to slow him down here. Can't do it. This bottom works on newer tires. Just the shortest way around the racetrack. Everybody's going to go to the top on older tires. Just easier to make speed, but with a lot of grip in the race car. The way it is right now, you just want to run the bottom if you can. Parker Klingerman. 
48 car battling to get into the top five from Brandon Jones. Seems like Parker did a good job in stage one to get up into that top 10, but they seem to have improved this car. Here comes Sammy Smith again in the 18, trying to get by Cole Custer. Custer's fallen back now from that second spot. Allgaier's taking it over. Yeah, see, Custer's already committed to the top. Two guys out front are still running the bottom of the racetrack. John Hunter Nemechek out front. It was announced earlier this week he would be driving for Legacy Motor Club in 2024. Junior, Jeff, when you guys knew that information ahead of time, how much of a relief was it to finally get it out there that you were going to race at the highest level? Well, it's a relief, but mostly it's excitement, right? You know this information, and you cannot wait to tell the world. Uh, you're, you know, you're. it's not so much that it's, you know, over your shoulder or, or, or putting pressure on you. It's, it's something you're thrilled to let everyone know. And so I think when you finally get to share that information, it gives you a good, gives you a good energy, a burst of energy to move forward. Now, to your point, Rick, he can just focus on this 20 car and this team and finishing strong with them. But that's some great news that you can't wait to, to, to let everyone know about and having to keep that secret, man, that's not fun. That's, the, that's not easy to do. It did not take long for Riley Herbst to go from, all right, let's, you know, kind of try to be calm to now it's so loose he can't control it. Well, let's remind everybody. What did you do, my man? Well, what did you do? A couple things. The first stage had start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. So that balance of the race car is going to change dramatically with those three or four cycles on the tires. Now, this set of tires right here, if you see Devin or Steve of the crew chief right there in the bottom left. Now, this one, you basically have a pit stop, one pace lap, we fire off and go green. So now he talks about the left rear feeling like it has no air. Now, that doesn't surprise me, Jeff. If you are low on air without having those cycles to build tight, uh, it does make sense. Plus, the 98 had great long run speed, but I think they're hurting too much on the short run. Yeah, that, that's right, Steve. They, they did have great long run speed. And, and out. Oh, right. Cole Custer. It looked like, he had, looked like he ran over something. There was something. We saw smoke fly to the right side of the car. Well, they said caution for debris, and then he wrecked, I think. Was... Yeah. What did he Look hit? at the damage on the right front. At the wall. Yeah, but get up into the wall in one and two. I agree, but the damage in front of the tire, to Jeff's point, I don't believe is from the wall. I believe that looks like, did debris hit it above the splitter? I, sm I saw smoke come out of the car. I just happened to look over there, and I... Let's go back and see what happened. Everything looks fine going down the front straightaway. Drives into turn one. Oh, yeah, right yeah. there. If we back that up, it looks like there's something sitting on the track that he hits. It's way down into the corner. Something dark. Right there. Yep. I don't know what that was, but everything's fine. And then whatever it is is sitting in the racetrack. Right there. Oh, it looks like a tire carcass. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at that right there. I mean, that is a huge piece of debris. I agree, Jeff. Maybe a, a tire carcass off another car. And then watch. He hits it. And that's the damage on the front nose. And then just like that, the double zero turns right. Well, the caution didn't come out quick enough for Cole Custer as debris was definitely on the racetrack there. You see it. That is a tire carcass. Kim. And a very frustrated Cole Custer. He knew exactly what he ran over, shared his displeasure with the team on the radio. You see them right now diagnosing that right front where he caught that tire on the track. But Cole Custer not happy, said there should have been a caution thrown out for that on the racetrack. Now, I believe the caution was thrown before the double zero, like almost simultaneously, you know, but definitely before. To Cole's point, NASCAR had put the yellow on the racetrack almost at the same time as the double zero, double zero enter turn one. 
I would be frustrated as well. I understand, but you know, it, it, we, it was crazy, right? Because you said yellow, Rick, and yeah. then the double zero hit that and hit the wall. And that, that's that's so frustrating as a driver because there was no way you could see it till you got to it, right? It's 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 a black tire carcass sitting on a black asphalt. You, there's no way you can see it. Go back. So this is the 51 coming in. You see it, we stop right there. You look at the right yeah. rear tire is coming off that car, right? So he has a flat right rear, Jeff, going into turn one. Yeah. That's just unfortunate. And, and, and if you're Cole Custer, yeah, you expect NASCAR to see that. And now he's committed. There's no missing it. Had he been able to see it approaching the corner, Junior, he could have done something, but there's just no possible way he could have seen it. It was right there. Change his line. What's we amazing? saw it go in between the 20. Yeah, what's amazing is that those two drivers right there went around it. Unfortunate for Custer to have to be the one to come along and hit that tire carcass. So it comes off the 51 of Jeremy Clements. The double zero of Cole Custer hits it into the wall. Caution out for the fifth time. Coming up tomorrow on USA, it's countdown to green for the second race of the first round of playoffs last week. Kyle Larson was able to win at Darlington, so he won his way into the round of 12. Can someone do it tomorrow? That'll be at 3 o'clock, and then wrap it up on NASCAR American Post Race Show just after the checkered flags on USA and Peacock. Well, we saw Cole Huster hit that tire carcass. Well, here's the leader, John Hunter Nemechek, in the 7 of Allgaier. I mean, I don't know if this is lucky or good, but there's the tire carcass right there, and these cars split it, the 20 to the top and the seven to the bottom. Unfortunately, for the double zero, not so fortunate. 27 laps to go. It'll be 26 after the green flag flies here in stage two. To the outside, John Hunter Nemechek. Allgaier on the inside. Green flag back in the air. Well, stack up on the outside. Cookerman had a problem. The 98 into the right, left for a quarter panel. I mean, and he's dropping back now as Kligerman's able to keep going, but the 48 has an issue. Right 98's down, in the fence. Down. He's got a right front tire down. 98, very slow on the track. Josh Williams was right behind him, but yes. Right front damage here, guys. Smoke coming out of the right side. Parker had a problem taking off on the restart. Stacked everybody up. Riley didn't see it. Ran into the back of him. And it's still green, right? We're still racing, so this 98 limps his way around to pit road. And this could be the difference right here of Herps making the playoffs or not. No caution came out. He's on pit road, and he's going to lose a couple laps. Dave. And you can see it there. It is on the right side. They are going to just change the two right side tires. Remember, problems were for Kligerman last week, problems this week for Riley Herbst. And this time, the restart was a different issue for Riley, but that's been uh, his thing all day. These restarts are not good for him. They'll check the rest of the damage on this 98, see if he can claw back again like he did at the end of stage one. Now they're taking the time to make sure that it's clearanced enough that the fresh tire won't just go flat when they go back out. Let's take a look at exactly what happened. You called it live, Jeff, a stack up on the outside lane. You see the 48, the third car, the white and orange car on the outside. Looks like maybe a missed shift, Jeff. Yeah, or Sheldon got into the back of him and then caused the problem. Let's listen. I felt like he got it in gear. I feel like... When he downshifted about that time, he did. Sheldon got into the back of him. Let's watch it here. See, right there. But he was. The 48 was dropping back some. But, you know, maybe he didn't get it in gear cleanly on the downshift. Very hard to tell. So John Hunter Nemechek leads Allgaier by three car lengths. Riley Herbst back out on the racetrack now. And the issue for Riley is he's two laps down. So 
And it's really hard because with the limited tires in Xfinity, the leaders just don't pit a lot, so you really can't even take the wave around. Um, it's going to be a tough battle from here for the 98. But it's still possible. We don't want to give up hope on Riley Herbst making the playoffs. Parker Kligerman right now still running his race in the eighth position. There's the top three, John Hunter Nemechek, Allgaier, and Smith. Let's ride along with Parker one more time on this restart. Watch his hand, his right hand. See what he does with the shifter here. Like he didn't get it all the way into gear. Yep. Finally was able to get it into third gear and accelerate, but not quick enough to avoid what happened right there with Herbst. And that happens, Junior, when you try to get it in gear too quickly. You, you've lifted off the gas, but and when you just before you start lifting, you start moving the handle forward, and it just cannot fall into gear. It's just rushing that shift. Interested to see if they've already talked to Parker yet, if anything has been relayed. Patrick Donahue, I know, is on top of you know where everybody's running yeah just have to be very careful because remember now the 98 has fresher tires can he get at least back to only one lap down uh with the remaining 19 laps of this stage that'll be important the other thing is the fourth place car is brandon jones the must win car or there are a few but he's the one we thought had the best chance he has shown up with reasonable speed one or two adjustments and he perhaps could have winning speed dave and see, if you think back to what the summer's been like for Riley Herbst, there was a time when he was not at all in trouble for making the playoffs, but that black 98 car went through a series of issues, some mechanical, some on track. In fact, they replaced the car chief after the disaster at Daytona where he had a mechanical issue on lap one. So they've overcome a lot. Like you said, very tough with the way this uh, Xfinity Series racing works to get back from two laps down. Now it's up to Riley to keep his head in the game, just do what he can on track. Let's listen in to the 48 radio and what kind of messages have been relayed. 98, two laps down. You're doing good here. Keep focus. Focus four, five, two. So there's some information about the 98, but how crazy is it that the 48 has the issue and the 98 is the car that runs into him? I mean, it's just, I mean, you can't write a story that fast. It's a heck of, here. Yeah, this has been a heck of a battle going on for the last several laps. I've been watching it. Jim Burton in the 27, racing his teammate in the 31. Caution's oh, Brandon out, Jones. Brandon Jones. Mentioned he was running fourth. Now he's in the grass. Spud coming off a of turn four. Don't see really any damage to the right side of the car. Looks like he got up, you know, turn four, got loose, the car come around. Down the front straightaway, really lucky going through the grass without any damage to the splitter. Six cautions already. With 16 laps still to go in stage two. Yeah, just pushing really hard, trying to find some speed and just asking a little bit too much out of the car and around it goes. This is the part you get nervous about when that front splitter hits the grass but it looks like it rolled over top of it pretty good. Not much damage, if any. The big challenge for the nine now is if there's no damage, what do you do about tires? Only four sets in the pits. So it'd be shocking if they feel like they can stay on this set with 15 laps to go on the stage, but you really have to consider trying it because you don't, you know, if you put a set of stickers on now, you're going to be a set behind the cars. You're going to be racing for the win. Yeah, so, something else here, Steve, that happens is that Jerry McClemens was a one lap down. He'll get the, he'll get, his lap back that'll put only one other person a lap down so if you could get another quick caution then that could help riley start getting his laps back kim and brandon jones may be getting away with uh, not a lot of damage on that incident the interesting thing is when i talked to brandon this morning he felt like this was a place you could get aggressive without too much risk not the case here as we saw him go spinning after snapping loose Service done to the nine. They'll get him back out. Pit road was closed when he came, but 
obviously by spinning he's going to start at the back of the pack anyway yeah and the leaders they you know they would love to have tires but it just goes back to the tire limit they can't put an extra set on here so you just have to kind of ride this set of tires to the end of the stage Cole Custer now out of the infield care center and standing by with Kim. Yeah, that's right, Rick. After he hit a tire carcass, could anything have been done differently in that situation? I don't know. I don't want to put you know blame on anybody. I don't know if it's just dumb luck or if I should be mad at NASCAR. I don't know how long it was sitting out there, but it just sucks. You know, like I was committed into the corner to try and I was going to carry a bunch of speed in there, wash up in, into the corner, and that tire was sitting right where I was washing up into. So it just... Uh, it just sucks. I, I saw it, you know, two two car lengths before I, I was into it, and it just uh, was too late. I couldn't, you know, couldn't miss it. So we had a fast car, though. Our guys have been working all year trying to find that little bit, little bit of speed that we need, and I think we had it today. Just needed the balance a little bit better, but um, I think we're gonna have some really good fight coming into the playoffs here. I'm, uh, I'm really happy with these Haas Animation Ford Mustangs, and uh, hopefully give them a good run at it. So the good news is the playoffs don't start till next week, but the bad news maybe a momentum killer. How do you reset and refocus for Bristol? I mean, honestly, I'll see this as a momentum gain. I mean, I think this has been about our one of our best mile and a half races this year where I feel like we could have competed for a win. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to have a, a good playoff run here. Great perspective from Cole Custer despite the result here today at Kansas. And Cole Custer, his weekend's not done. He's double duty. He's going to run in the Cup Series race tomorrow. So unfortunate ending to the regular season for Cole Custer, though. Sunday night football on NBC at Peacock. It's Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys visiting Barkley and the New York Giants. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern with football night in America. You got a favorite there? I know you're not a Giants fan. Cowboys, though? I can't cheer for either of them, Rick. I mean, as a I Patriots fan, I think they take your card away if you cheer for... You can't cheer for the Giants, for sure. The 98's going to use this opportunity to work on the right front fender. I like this decision, right? They're on their own lap. They're two laps down. Um, you know, so put some fuel in the car. Let's talk about the pathway back. There's one car in front of him, one lap down. He's two laps down. If we get another quick yellow, that car will get the free pass. And now Herps will be next up at the stage end. If we don't get a yellow, um, then it's gambling. But that's what the 98's going to have to do. He could stay out at the end of the stage, take the wave round. Everybody's going to pit. So this is those times, you know, we talk a lot about crew chiefing a car to win and adjustments, two tires, four tires, how to make your car better. But the amount of studying these crews have to do to understand these situations sometimes are even more complicated. How do you put the puzzle together from here to get back onto the lead lap? So while that crew is working on the 98, Dave, let's talk a little bit about the 27 of Jeff Burton. He's having a good day right now, running 12th. We showed that battle earlier with him and his teammate, Parker Retzlaff. And he's got an interested bystander uh, today as well. You know his dad, Ward Burton, started the Ward Burton Wildlife Foundation to do a lot of different things with conservation. Uh, and they also do uh, veterans' causes. And I want to introduce you to Tim Story, who served our country in the Army Nas or in the National Guard, right? Yep. And the cool thing that Ward's foundation did this week was that he, they made a match with a, an emotional dog. Um, what do we call those, Tim? I'm sorry. An emotional companion? An emotional support animal. Support animal. Yeah, I couldn't get the words out. And that is Liberty. So Liberty and Tim met everybody earlier today, and they've spent their time together this first week. And after today, she will go home with Tim to support him at his home. So first of all, thanks for serving our country. How are you enjoying your time here at Kansas? It's unbelievable. It's, just, it's a dream come true. Uh, I'm so blessed to be here, and I got to thank Jeb and, and the Ward Burton Wildlife Foundation. They've done uh, just an incredible job, you know, rolling out the red carpet, and it's just, I'm beyond, beyond words. I'm speechless, really. What do you think of Liberty? Uh, she's a beautiful, she's an 11-month-old uh, golden retriever, uh, and she's just a, a wonder, wonderful companion. And she's going to be there for Tim as he works his life post serving our country, Rick, a really great cause. And we appreciate Ward's uh, foundation helping him out with that. Tim and Liberty, uh, great combination there. So, yep, thanks, Ward Burton Foundation. And a little bit of a moment for Jeb Burton. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. These cars racing hard over the last several laps. 39 is going to get up here, and they're just going to have some contact. And more contact right there. That's why I thought the 27 was going to get spun around. They got the race in each other again several laps later, no contact. I'm sure Jeb wasn't real happy with that, but 
kept us cool when they got side by side later on a few laps later. That battle back for 15 through yeah. 20 second, it is, it is fierce, it's intense. Well, Jeff, 15 through 20 second, how about one through 30? I mean, on these restarts, you just never know where it's gonna fan out, be three, four wide. Maybe somebody misses a shift. Restart happening again. It'll be 11 laps to go in stage two. It's on old tires, this restart. It'll be tough for everybody on the bottom of the racetrack. We're gonna be three wide down in the corner. Austin Hill on the bottom of the 21. You see the seven of Allgaier trying to work that higher line. He's in third now. Very close, though, for fourth. Klugelman stuck in the middle right there. Down to the apron. 21 and 7, fighting for position. That's for third. Sammy Smith running second. Josh Berry in the eighth with the momentum now. Can he get to the back bumper of the seven? Josh Berry's had a good comeback, struggled early in the race. We saw him get really loose, stack everybody up. Now he's got his car much better, racing his teammate for third, Dave. Burton, they went to work on it. At his worst, he was 15th and fallen way back into the clutches of the middle of the pack. But they went to work on it. At one point, it was insanely tight. Then it got just a little bit free. And now you can see what he's doing, trying to run down his teammate here for third. That's a lift a little bit right there. Got a little tight on the corner exit. This is the kind of track Josh Berry's been really good on these mile and a half. Places to get slick. Tires go away really quickly. That's where we've seen him excel. See that great run he got off turn four. To the inside here. It'll be tough to make the pass on the bottom. Justin's gonna take the top here, be really comfortable. The eight sliding around on the bottom, he's gonna lose the spot. Tried to side draft him there to pull the seven back. It didn't work. Now he goes back to work trying to get beside him. Here comes the 48 of Parker Kligerman. Kligerman's gonna go by Moffitt. Yeah, Moffat doing a good job in that 25. And then right behind him, the 11 of Kraus. We don't see him running a lot of Xfinity races. He's doing a good job as well, racing in ninth underneath Moffat. Moffat in the 25, Derek Kraus in the 11. See, Derek just drove straight to the bottom of the racetrack. Moffat's going to get a run on corner exit. What's he going to do with it? Jumps to the inside. Kraus going to try to slow him down into the corner. Just barely got him slowed down enough to stay on his right side. Now he's got the preferred spot coming off turn four. Derry Kraus, 22 years old. Now he was the youngest driver to win in the Arca Midwest Tour back in 2016. Kim, what about Moffitt? He was the most confident this morning when I talked to him that he's been all year before our race. He said his success here gives him the confidence boost that he otherwise wouldn't have. Right now, the car rolls over the right rear just a little bit too much. Feels like it's a little on the splitter. Otherwise, has really good outright speed for Moffitt, who runs in the ninth position. And now he'll be under attack again from the 16 of Chandler Smith. Chandler's 13 laps down to the field, had an issue earlier, was in the garage. Great battle right here. That's the 19 of Joe Graff Jr. in that black car with the red numbers. The 27, Jeb Burton, 43 in the 26, Kaz Grala in the 26 on the inside. The 43 is Ryan Ellis on the outside. And look at that. I mean, there is no space. Three still on top, outside, outside, no hold, outside, no hold. Look at how tight this no is. Hold. It's like a hornet's nest. Ryan Sieg trying to figure out a way. Can't get by Grala. Burton running that high line, then Ellis behind him. Oh, that's tight off of two. <laughs> Jeff looks like his car just is not getting to the corner exit very well. Kind of stacks everybody up. Rolls the middle okay. But on corner exit, he's got to get out of the throttle. 
Draw a side drafting Ryan Ellis. See if he'll be able to complete the pass. He does getting into one. All players coming to you, Bopper here. Moffitt running ninth. Retzloff is tenth. Jograf Jr. eleventh. Grala, Ellis, Sieg, Burton, and Williams all the way from twelfth to sixteenth. That's the ninety-two of Josh Williams coming into the picture. Under two laps to go. John Hunter Nemechek trying to sweep the stages. Get another playoff point. Put himself in position for another win, possibly. John Hunter already the winningest driver in the Xfinity Series with five wins on the season. One more time around for stage two. It's been a big week. You mentioned it earlier. Announced that he's going cup racing next year. Five wins is the type of year you want to have, but he definitely wants to make a run into the playoffs. Sammy Smith in second, another Joe Gibbs racing entry. So the Toyotas definitely have really good pace right behind them. All Guy and Barry, both at a junior motorsports, and then two RCR cars with Austin Hill and Sheldon Creed. Stage two winner. John Hunter Nemechek. Second straight week, Nemechek has swept first two stages. Finished third last week in the race at Darlington. We'll see if he can improve two spots on that. Parker Barker Kligerman was able to grab some more stage points with his seventh place finish. It was not easy for quite a few. Stage two, a little rough. But no problems for John Hunter Nemechek winning stage two. Getting ready for pit stops after stage two is complete. You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series Kansas Lottery 300. Pit stops will be coming here and Putting the emphasis on these crew members. Again, five on, five off. Sounds so simple, right? Uh, yeah. Five lug nuts on either side, just nice and easy, kind of. John Hunter Nemechek bring the field pit road, and they'll start peeling off quickly, Kim. Great day for Sammy Smith. Top left said it started off neutral, but built free. Otherwise, really likes the car. Thinks it's going to be good on the long run. Four fresh Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel. Slight adjustment there, as you see the wet or the chassis adjustment on the 18. That just to give more rear stability. Also needing rear stability. Parker Kligerman said it was better that run. Slide in the rears. Need more stability there. Turns good though. Four fresh tires, adjustment and fuel. Goodyear tires for stage sweeper John Hunter Nemechek as well. That may be the only adjustment. He said it's pretty good. I'd be happy staying again and not making any. As for the seven of Justin Allgaier, his car was very loose. Air pressure adjustment to try to correct that. No position changes at the top two, but Austin Hill and Sheldon Creed both grab two spots as Allgaier drops two. Derek Krause in the 11, gaining a couple spots also. So as the Xfinity drivers coming off of pit road, we know tomorrow, the Cup Series, it's race two of the first round of the playoffs right here at Kansas. That was in May when Denny Hamlin got into the back of the five just a bit and Larson into the wall. Hamlin goes on to win. What will happen in the playoffs? Make sure to join us on USA at 2.30 for countdown to green, 3 o'clock for the race. Just after the checkered flag flies on both USA and Peacock for post-race coverage. Kyle Larson won a week ago, so he is on to the round of 12. To take a look at the points, though, the bottom four after Bristol will get eliminated from the playoffs. That's yeah, great battle. A little bit of news. William Byron had a part failure in, in practice, and we were told that that was an unapproved adjustment, but NASCAR has, since they met with the team, has determined it was not an unapproved adjustment because it wasn't a team problem. It was a part problem, so they will keep their starting position. I know in 
the past, Steve, it, they deemed things safety. Like for sometimes well, they would see something with a crack in it. They safety is that? Not no, the case? I, I don't think this is a safety issue. I think this is basically a part provided that it's the only option that they have to run. Uh, so I, I think they're saying, hey, the team couldn't do anything about it. They don't want to penalize them. But as you see in the standings back here in the Xfinity series. A new leader, the nine of Jones. We saw him spin. They had to come down and do some damage. So he rode around a couple seconds off the pace on purpose to save tires. So he's on a little older tire, but he's now the leader of the race. Riley Herbs taking the wave around. Why does that matter? Well, that puts him one lap down. Now if we see a yellow, he can get back on the on the lead lap. So a lot of the storylines around the playoff field in Xfinity you would think would start to clear up, but here we are through two stages, and I'm not sure they're really any clearer. <laughs> A little bit of a close call on pit road for Parker Kligerman. Yeah, Derek Krause, he leaves his pit stall and comes right out in front of Kligerman. And I think Kliger Parker made a great decision right there. We heard him lift. He's like, hey, I got to avoid this incident. I cannot afford contact. Parker's done a great job today on restarts, driving this race car. He's got points in every stage, but that was a great decision to give that spot up, not to damage his race car. All right, guys, let's have a look at the keys to victory lane brought to you by Ruoff Mortgage. Restarts, you know that there's going to be pretty intense restarts in this final stage. Three and four and maybe, maybe five wide, as wide as this racetrack is. And a lot happening, a lot of contact. Trying to get through that clean, but also maintain or gain some ground. Understand your surroundings. We just saw it right there with Parker Klugerman. Understand the situation you're in and react accordingly. That's going to be the difference between making these playoffs and not. And the leaders all have two sets of fresh tires. You only really need to pit once if it goes green. But if there are yellows, win, Rick. Win is the magic yellow flag stop to put on those extra set of tires. That could determine the winner. So we know with 105 to go, it's going to be 104 when we get the restart. They will have to come to pit road one more time. And I'm really sure. fascinated to see how fast this nine car is. Like I said, he definitely has some laps on his tires, so he probably won't be able to hold up a fight to the 20 and the 18 and the 21. But how far does he fall? If he could cycle somewhere inside the top 10, um, that would reset really the day for the nine who was spinning through the grass just a little while ago. Brandon Jones on the outside. John Hunter Nemechek, winner of stage one and two on the inside. Stage three underway. They just shoved Brandon Jones out of the way. The seven got into the back of the 21 and just pushed him out of the way. A little bit older tire, didn't get as good of a restart. Josh Berry coming up on his inside as well. There's oh, contact! The seven's around, Sammy Smith's in the wall. Brandon Jones around as well. Kligerman gets through it. He was right behind him. got loose and Clintus killed it. And that's the, that's the caution that Riley Herbst needed. That's going to put him back in the lead lap. Riley Herbst was the highest scored lap down car, which as long as he doesn't bring the caution out, he receives the free pass. Great work by the 98, making the best of the situation. Damage on a restart earlier, nothing they could do. Davin Restivo, the engineers on this 98, strategize a way to get back on the lead lap. The opposite for the seven. Pole sitter, great speed, gets caught up in a wreck. The 18 of Sammy Smith, tons of damage. Yeah, this team talked about needing to avoid these bad finishes, these incidences. That's the seventh straight race with an accident for Sammy Smith. Let's see if we can figure out how this happened down the back straight away. And 18 just kind of jumps out of the throttle there of a three wide situation. So coming off of turn two right here, they get three wide. 18 in the middle, seven on the outside. Sammy just kind of lifts really hard, you know, entering that corner. I don't know if Josh Berry was ready or understanding that he was going to do that. Yeah, the three, right, three wide right here. Josh Berry oh, gave Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was contact getting into the corner. The two car. And that's why, that's why Sammy Smith checked up a little bit, that contact. Here it goes. Right along with Parker Kligerman. Yeah, that's where it started. 
In slow motion, it just looks so simple, but now at rear, real speed, heading down the back stretch, the contact from the two of the eight ch and the 18 checks him up. Look at the difference. I mean, it happens so quickly. I'm with you, Dale. Initially, I thought, you know, the 18 said, hey, I just don't want to be three wide. I'm going to get out of the gas a little bit. And then we see it's really the two kind of trying to arc the corner, I'm guessing. Yeah, they all, they all just kind of converge right here. I'm not sure that, I think you called it right. I think that they were expecting the two to turn a little bit sooner than he did. That contact getting into the corner started this whole stuff. And there's Parker Kligerman sliding right by. One playoff spot out there to grab. It's a great shot of it right here. See the two, he just doesn't turn. He just keeps going straight like he wants to, like you said, Steve, arc the corner. Enter the corner as high as possible, and everyone was expecting him to turn, and he didn't. Let's listen to him. I, I didn't move, right? He just turned down early, right? Yeah, you're good. Nothing we could do different. So I would disagree with that statement. I don't think it was on purpose, but I do believe with that head-on shot coming at you, um, in a three-wide situation, Creed was more like the middle of the racetrack. You know what I mean, Jeff? Like, he's turning in like he's going to run the middle or at least a groove off the bottom and three wide. I think the other two expected him to run the bottom. I don't think, you know, it's an egregious mistake, but he, the other two definitely clearly thought he was turning lower. Yeah, I agree with that. Working on the back of the seven. Dave, coming to you again. So the left front, I believe they talked about cutting a splitter bar so that they could pull it up manually and get the splitter off on the left front. They do have to replace that bumper cover on the back, one of the required parts. So they have named the personnel. They have named the tasks. And Jim Pullman looks on from above the box there as they try to direct Justin Allgaier's repairs here, see what he can make out of the day. And I would coach them through this if I'm Jim Pullman, even if there's nothing to gain, because we talk a lot about prepping for the playoffs and practice. Well, this is great real-time situation for this crew to be ready to make a repair like this, because in the playoffs, this could be the one point that advances you out of a round. Why do they have to have a bumper cover? It's not for safety. The metal bumper is still there if you ever get rear-ended. The issue is when you take that rear bumper off, as crazy as this sounds, that is way better aerodynamically, like way, way, way better. So there was a time, hard to believe, that crew chiefs didn't secure them as well as they should. And they kind of blew off on their own. <laughs> sure they did. car has now said, hey, at these big high-speed tracks, no, don't play any games because you're going to have to put it back on. So they'll work on that for Allgaier. I expect the 98 probably will come down pit road when he's allowed. He, I think he's going to be rewarded the free pass. So he's waiting to drive past the pace car. So he has to actually unlap himself and then come to pit road. There they gave him the sign to unlap himself. And he has damage on the right front. So, okay, the 7 was putting a bumper on. You're allowed to put a new part on because it's required. The 98 has to repair that right front fender, but they can't put like new fenders on because it's not a required part. The nine of Brandon Jones back on pit road, Kim. Yeah, that's right. We've got a piece of that incident between Sheldon Creed and Sammy Smith, as well as others. Just can't catch a break. Doesn't look like devastating damage. We'll get back on the race car, but definitely likely takes him out of a shot at winning this race, which he needed to get into the playoffs. Yeah, he's running out of the tires quickly on the nine car. It just puts you so far behind. So now that 98 will have the opportunity to pit, they'll probably get caught up to the field because they'll continue to try to work on that fender. They're not racing anyone because they're the free pass. They'll have to line up tail end, last car basically on the racetrack. But he's on the lead lap, which means he can keep gaining points. That's the big difference. So now Parker Kligerman running in fifth, doing a great job. He just needs to be aware that an issue here, um, and you, you know, points are available for the 98. So the one thing that Parker Kligerman has going for him is he was able to gain some more points in the second stage as far as stage points. Uh, so for the day, he earned nine points through the stages. And with the issues that the 98 had, right now where they're running, both of them on the racetrack, they're separated by 29 points. So you see stage points earned today. John Hunter Nemechek earning the most that you can by winning both stages. But Parker Kligerman doing a, a valiant effort of gaining as many positions or as many points as he can to get him set to potentially make that 12th spot for the playoffs. Dave? 
Rick, if you ever wondered why you keep your driver's head in the game, it's for instances like this. Two laps down, not a lot of opportunities to get those laps back. He has gotten them back now, and so the 24-year-old, who can be feisty at times, has been calmed down. He has a fast race car, and now he's got to see what he can do with it toward the end of this race. They'll change the four Goodyear tires here. Little adjustment to the chassis as well. Sometimes the rough day you've had, Rick, actually take the nerves off. Now you're not expected to be in it. Now he's going to go after it. After this, the eighth caution came out. And green flag back out again. Austin Hill on the inside of the 21. John Hunter Nemechek in the 20 on the outside. Josh Berry. Now fighting on the inside for that third spot, but Sheldon Creed looking for his first ever Xfinity Series win, now fighting for second. There's still 97 to go in the race, Rick. I know it's two stages, but this last stage, very long. Sheldon Creed up to second now. And look at Parker Kligerman in the 48, fighting for the top five. Parker Resloff having a good day. Ran well last week at Darlington also. Yeah, the whole top 15 got a lot of unfamiliar names in it. Jeb Burton there in ninth. Ellis, Grala, Sieg, Moffitt, Joe Graff Jr., Massey, Williams, all looking to have great finishes today. A lot of attrition, a lot of mistakes, a lot of cars crashed out of the top 10. Eight cautions before halfway today. That's the most ever. At Kansas. Moffitt, Grala, Jeb Burton three wide here for a moment. I feel like Jeb Burton's been three wide for half the race, Dale. It's every yeah. time I look up. He's struggling, but he's running the top, which is the kind of preferred line. Makes it a little bit difficult for these other cars to get around him. Grala's got the 10th spot. And now ninth as he took it away from Burton. Here comes the eight of Josh Berry. Will he be able to slide up? No, he's not going to be able to clear the two of Creed. Tried to slow him down a little bit down, down the back straight with his side draft. Can't do it. Runs a little bit lower, just a little offset to the left to keep some air on the nose. That Bass Pro Shop Chevrolet. Back alongside Creek, side by side down the front straight away. Now he's got enough momentum. Now he can overdrive the entry and just slide up in front of Creed, which he doesn't even have to do it. He cleared it on the straight. Now, let's see if Josh Berry's got enough speed to go take the fight to Nemechek. Now this is the Josh Berry I've been waiting to see. This is the one we saw last year. They got him getting it figured out at the right time, heading into the playoffs, going cup racing next year. We talk a lot about John Hunter. Well, let's not forget Josh Berry announced it a few months ago now that he's going to take over the four for Kevin Harvick. I know he wants to leave a champion. And this is what we expect to see out of the driver of the eight. The fastest car on the racetrack that lap. A couple tenths faster than John Hunter. Twenty five of Moffitt able to clear the twenty seven of Burton. And let's go back to Kim Kuhn, who's with Sammy Smith. Sammy Smith out of the race early. We heard the frustration on the radio with the two. What happened? Yeah, it's just uncalled for. He kind of came up there, and once he came up, the eight hit me as well. So I was kind of just along for the ride there. Um, I tried to have a good restart. Felt like I did, and uh, just got put put tight on my door there, getting into one, and got free, and then got put on mail at three. But thanks to everybody at JGR, TMC, for being on the car this weekend. Had a really fast car, and uh, it's, it sucks. We got to... Keep, uh, keep digging, and we'll uh, have a good start in the playoffs. Keep digging. And he's going to start looking forward to the playoffs, which will begin next week. Yeah, the car that's flying right now, Brandon Jones, he's picked up 12 spots on this restart. We saw him spinning through the grass a little bit ago. Team's done a nice job putting tires back on the car, getting him back some track position. We came down good speed right now. Yeah, came down pit road in lap 100 and put another set of tires on. So he's got a little bit newer tires. Six or seven laps better. 
but they're at a big disadvantage because they're behind on tires at least a set. And so as we get more yellows, they're not able to put new tires on this car and the rest of the field is, that's when it's gonna be trouble and more difficult for this team. And that's what it comes down to. Remember, four sets of tires in your pits to run this race. You put one on after stage one, one on after stage two. The leaders have two left. As Dale just pointed out, we think the nine probably has one left. The way they've cycled through, probably used up some scuffs. We'll get an update as we go. So they're hoping for a green flag, right, Dale? They want it to be an obvious time to put the last set of tires on and then not have a lot of yellows towards the finish where the leaders can then put another set. John Hunter Nemechek maybe has an issue as we were listening to the radio. How do they yeah. check, Steve? Well, I, I just wanted to answer that question. Vibrations here? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, for as long as I can remember, with this tire, right, not the new thin, thin sidewall cup tire, but with this tire in the trucks, cup, and Xfinity, for the last decade, we've always had tires that shook. There'd be an odd set every now and then that would shake, and a, and a lot of guys come down pit road thinking they got a loose wheel and find out that they don't. And Dale... I, I like the fact, though, that you know that information, and I'm happy if you ask me to check. So what do I check? First thing we do is we check the videos. All the tire changers wear cameras. You can see how well they hit all five lug nuts. You see these pink lines painted on the socket. Well, when the lug nut's tight, you can see the line stop. The other thing is they measure the actual air pressure to the gun, and you can see the variation in air pressure on each of the five lug nuts. And you can say, okay, at least four are tight, or three are tight, and you can have some more confidence. It feels exactly like a loose wheel, and so that's the only concern for a driver. It doesn't feel slightly unique, uh, but when, but for whatever reason, this tire has always shook at this racetrack, and if you've got four sets, the odds of you getting a set that's gonna shake is low, but it does happen to quite a few cars in the field. As we're focusing on John Hunter Nemechek, let's take a look at the Toyota driver update, and already he's gonna add to this number, but laps led for John Hunter Nemechek goes up to 69 now 69 of the 115 laps that have been run the 20 has been out front this battle for the final playoff spot is for sure not locked up you mentioned it Parker Kligerman nine points in the stages is really impressive these two teams the 98 and the 48 we don't see a lot of stage points so that was a big effort from the 48 but the effort's been matched by the 98 with resiliency. Remember, they had the issue, they damaged to the right front, they've got a couple laps back, and here they are, 15th, and running on the fence. This is the drive Herbst needs to put in if he wants to have a chance. I mean, the math is simple. If you figure out where they started and what they've earned, the 98 needs to beat the 48 by seven spots. He needs six spots, would tie him, but unfortunately, the 48 has a tiebreaker, so he needs to beat him by seven spots. So if you're Parker, you run top seven, you know he can't beat you by that. That's many. right. Dave. Working his way by the 19 of Joe Graff, who's having a good run. That was for fourth, 13th place. And surviving the restart, that was a big deal for the 98 because he was three wide, two wide. He was working his way back through cars that were much slower. And on those restarts, even if you're not fighting cars that are fighting for the lead with you, that can get really messy, and it did not. Riley made it through the car as, as clean as it was with that right front fender damage, and he's working his way forward. Yeah, the key for Riley here is to get as many spots as he can and then have a restart, have a good pit stop, and then force Parker Kligerman and that team to have to press. You don't want to put them in a position where Parker can be smooth and calm on the restart, because we've seen what can happen on restarts, but if you put Parker in a position where he can be conservative and not have to pay the price for it, Parker's too smart of a race car driver to get himself in trouble. So you've got to have enough speed to put the pressure on this team to make them have to do something. So again, we focused a lot on the 48 and 98. Let's talk about a few names maybe that we don't talk about much. And I'm gonna start with Derek Krause, who's running in the sixth position. You know, he, like a lot of other drivers, began his racing career in go-karts and bandoleros, winning the GSR Kartway Championship back in 2012 and 13. This is just his fifth start in the Xfinity Series this year. Uh, his career best was 
back at Martinsville where he finished eighth so running well in the top six here right, another driver having a very great run the 31 of Parker Utzlau if he drives for Jordan Anderson racing his best mile and a half finish so far was a sixth at Charlotte he's currently running well he was seventh now eighth as the nine of Jones has got past him this 20 year old I think has a ton of potential upside when you talk about the team owner he's super excited to have him in the car working really hard to get him re-signed for next year yeah, Brandon Jones in that bright yellow car, a move over to Junior Motorsports this year. A lot of anticipation and excitement. It just hasn't worked out for them. They haven't caught any breaks at all. When they had speed, they got in wrecks, most of them not of their doing. I know they want to get this win and move themselves into playoffs, but if they can't, they can use the rest of this year to build for next year. Kaz Grala in the 26 car, finished 13th in Kansas in 2020, and his only start here got a new sponsor this year this island logger been big to support Kaz this year and give him an opportunity to have more starts in this series and he's making the most of it the young team that he races for he's trying his hardest over the last several years to find a full-time ride finally in some good equipment putting a great run in here today just behind him the highest running Ford right now is Brett Moffitt in the 10th position He's got a career best finish in the Xfinity Series of sixth here at Kansas, but his biggest accolades have come back in 2018 when he was a Truck Series champion. So has made the move to the Xfinity Series running full time here. Well, right behind Brett Moffitt is the 98 of Herbs. We have documented the issues he's had today. Came back for two laps down. But to take a little closer look at the driver himself, right? The 24 year old out of Las Vegas. He has spent quite a bit of time in the Xfinity Series, 134 starts. I believe that's why when we talk about playoffs, he keeps saying, I want to win. Still looking for his first career win. This may not be a winning performance today, but if he can drive back up and make his way into the playoffs, it's going to feel like that. Maybe the momentum he needs to carry on into the playoffs. And Steve, as we talk about the playoffs, the 19 of Joe Graff Jr. is a playoff eligible driver. Right, he's back in 13th position, and he drives the Joe Gibbs Racing 19. He's been in the series all season long, racing for RSS Racing as well. Raided his team the last time down that it was the best it had ever been. Just a tick loose for Graf. Taking a little tighter look at a few of the drivers out on the track. John Hunter Nemechek out in front. 76 laps remaining. Bring. My man. Yeah. To Wendy's for the new loaded nacho cheeseburger. Everybody say nacho. Nacho. It's melty. What? It's crunchy. And it's queso. -y. Yeah. Easiest choice I've ever made. Of course, he's not the only one transferring. Hey, oh. Steph has got room for two quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. Sorry, and who are you? Matt Leiter. Quarterback. National champion. Afraid that doesn't ring a bell. For the full nacho experience from all four sides. Where's the beef? Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new loaded nacho cheeseburger. At PNC Bank. You can find us in big cities and small towns across the U.S., where our focus is to always support the people who live and work there, because you call these communities home, and we do too. PNC Bank. Planning to move? Join the 6 million families who discovered a smarter, more flexible way to move with pods. Save up to 30% now for a limited time, whether you're moving across town or across the country. Save up to 30% at pods.com today. Ah, it was me the whole time. <laughs> well done, ma'am. What did I do exactly? With Snapchat from Progressive, you get a personalized discount for doing exactly what you're already doing, being a safe driver. Congratulations. This is a bowling trophy. Yeah, it's the biggest one they had. OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, and we get her. Nice footwork. Man, you're lucky. Watching live sports never used to be this easy. Now you can stream all your games like it's nothing. Yes! That's what I'm talking about! Oh, here he comes! Go! Yeah! 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 Running up and down that field looks tough. It's a pitch. Get way more into what you're into when you stream on the Xfinity 10G network.
More problems for Riley Herbst at Kansas Speedway. The makeshift fender that is the right front had come apart. He had to come to pit road before it got worse. He's waiting now to see if there's any damage from that uh, everything there flapping around. The crew going back in there, making sure he can get back out there. But now back laps down after he gotten back on the lead lap and was charging forward. Well, laps down. And now at the top of the screen, you see the 48 of Parker Kligerman. I think the, the, the task in front of him is very, very clear, right? Finish somewhere on the lead lap, somewhere inside the top 10 or 15 will probably do what you need to do, assuming we don't have that winner. And the nine of Jones is up to seventh with a ton of pace. I know he's behind a set of tires, but if you're the 48, the best thing you could do is be faster than the nine and try to hold him up, not let him just clear through as he's driving up through the field. So make that 48 pretty wide. Well, not wide enough to get wrecked, but wide enough that, you know, you don't want him to just drive through nice and clean. You want to at least put a fight up. And Parker Kligerman's driven a great race today. He's done everything he's needed to do. Great on restarts. He got track position, put Riley in a position where he had to push harder than he wanted to multiple times. This is, they've just been calm, cool, collected, executed. That execution's been the strength of this team over the last two months. And right now, that is enough to get this thing done to make the playoffs. Parker's yep. story is interesting, too, in the fact that he ran truck races. He's had wins there, has been a broadcaster for a couple years now. But last year, he got the nod. They said, we want you to run full time in the Xfinity Series for this 48 team. He said, I'm going to do it. I'm running full time, but I will still work on Sundays on the broadcast team. The other thing I think this 48 team did that was really wise as they were able to put together their deal for next year in the middle of this battle and I I, I know people are, hey what does next year matter well anyone when you have career concerns job concerns they have to be distracting race car drivers some of them most of them in this series are year to year the fact that Parker knew he was coming back I think really allowed him to focus on this task at hand uh, so that was well done by everyone really at the at the 48 team people have been wanting to see Parker in a full-time ride that was decent because they felt like that he was somewhat overachieving and very dependable in his truck series opportunities as limited as they were over the last several years and finally got a full-time ride. But the other thing I like right now, I know that they're trying to finish this race out, get themselves into the playoffs, but the speed they've shown today, it's better than what they've shown at the other ovals throughout the year. We look at Parker as kind of a road course guy, expect him to have great speed at those racetracks. At the ovals, they've been sort of back inside the top 10, 11th, 12th, places like that, working hard just to run in those positions. Today, though, you talked about this brand new car. They brought real, real speed to this race. I know we've had some attrition, some cars fall out, but Parker was running fifth, sixth place from the very beginning of this race. It's real speed in this car going forward into the playoffs. And the only, the only, only thing he did wrong all day was this right here. He just didn't get it in third gear, contact from behind. And then even though it was a, a little bit of a mistake, he still got the game because Riley Herbst is behind him. The contact, Riley Herbst tried to go inside, got right front fender damage. Riley saw an opening and went for it and just got a little too aggressive there. And that started the downhill spiral. Now the concern or the challenge is everything that was just said is real. Riley Herbst is 29th, two laps down, but there's still 66 to go in this race. We've seen flat tires. We watched Cole Custer hit a yeah. tire carcass in turn one, right? The, the 48 still has to get this thing to the finish line. Now, he could be a little bit, you know, I say put the mittens on, right? He could be a little bit more cautious around people, not take undue risk, but it's still auto racing, and we've seen crazier things happen. Well, restarts, right? We've, we've <laughs> yeah. seen Rex right after restarts. We've seen contact we've seen all sorts of things and you're still exposed to that danger <laughs> you see <laughs> hey you know who else knows it's not over patrick. my man patrick donahue <laughs> he has been racing a long time long time crew member of jeff gordon's team back in the 90s he has seen it all he's seen the ups the downs the good the bad and he is fiery and i like it and you can say he is crew chiefing until the checkered flag, he is assuming nothing is all set. I yeah. think he wants Parker off that wall a little I bit. I think he does. Yeah. <laughs> I said two feet. Move yeah. that thing down a little bit, please. Arms in the air. It's like, what's he doing? What's happening? Uh, just let him do his thing. He's earned 
Parker's earned it. Earned oh, we got a car spinning around turn four. Yeah, coming off a of four, it's the 45. And so Raja Karut spins into the grass and the Get caution comes up. out. Karuth got a little bit of help over there in the middle of turns three and four. Steve, this is too early for tires. This is your chance. Yes. This is it. Yes and yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, 63 to go. We think they can yeah, run 55 to 60, but everybody's going to have to pit at this point. He just said, I didn't hear the name, but I thought I heard him say someone spun him out. And we have some evidence. Yeah, let's take a look at it. It's like the 53 car. Bills gets into the left rear quarter panel, very light touch. It's enough to turn the 70 or the 45 around down the front straight away on the pit road. Yeah, they're running running for position 19. That's a nice job standing in the gas, keeping it out of the fence. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. When your car gets turned around like that, if you lift or slam on the brakes, it's just gonna slide into the wall. So he stands in the throttle and drives it down the racetrack. Try, push it, try to steer the car or drive the car away from the wall. And Raja was trying to work his way up, trying to match last night, 12th in the truck race. He had a good run last week in Darlington in this car as well. Tough little racetrack, came home in the top 20. Set back in practice earlier today. He spun in practice and missed a lot of, a lot of it because you couldn't put another set of tires on. That spin came out of turn four in practice earlier today, but this one, a little bit of help there, Raja. The 21-year-old out of Washington, D.C. So another thing, as we look at the, the 48 crew, we were talking about it's definitely not over, and all of that is still true. The other thing that's helping Parker, Jeff, you mentioned restarts. Well, there's 15 cars on the lead lap. That long green flag run. So now, you know, now is that tough decision when do you stop racing and just start checking the box at the task at hand? I think Brandon Jones in seventh is not allowing you to just check the box. I think he's going to force you to continue to race, um, try to be offensive. The 98, unfortunately, continues to have issues with the damage repair, Dave. Well, and Steve, part of the problem on that run for the 98 of Herbst was how John Hunter Nemechek was mowing down the field. He'd lapped all the way up through 16th. So Riley's laps down situation are not one lap down with those guys. He's two laps down. So he's got that problem going on. Still trying to get the right front suspension correct so that that uh, right front doesn't tear out again. Back to your point about when is it? Is it too early? Well, pit road being closed helps everyone. We're at 61 to go now. Pit's going to open at 60. Uh, we hear 55 to 60. Um, even if you're a 55 car with some caution laps, and this is a track I think you can save a little gas that I think everyone can confidently come in and put tires on. Now we have to get an update after this pit stop to see how many the nine has left. I was waiting to see are those stickers on the wall for the nine car that would answer the question. There's stickers for all these guys for sure. Oh, there you go. Question stickers. answered. Yep. Still has a brand new set in the pits. Now he just wants us think to go green from here. Kim. And Sheldon Creed reporting to the team. The longer they ran, the freer it got on that Chevy. It's going to be four fresh Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel. He asked for a slight chassis adjustment, too. You see the wrench going in right there. Parker Clearman said, I started to get loose center to exit, but my big request is make it turn better in the center. Completing service for fresh Goodyear tires, Sunoco fuel for Parker, Dave. Josh Perry in the eight was loose. They'll make an adjustment for that. John Hunter Nemechek was asked, did your car go tight enough for us to work on it? John said, I just don't think so, but they're going to take some air pressure out of the front tires anyway. See the race off pit road continuing. A little bit slow for the 11. Kligerman holding on to that fifth spot, but it wasn't easy getting onto pit road. Take a look at this. A little bit of contact. You don't want to make mistakes even coming to pit road. Then the race off. John Hunter Nemechek grabs that top spot again. Choose taking place now for the restart. And we see Josh Berry will be on the inside of John Hunter Nemechek in row one. Austin Hill and Creed, Kligerman and Krause. 
Jones Grolic. Joe Graff Jr. Ryan Sieg has some issues as he stopped on the backstretch. Looks like the he's going to get a little push back to pit road. Kim. And Brandon Jones has caught no breaks today. We saw him spin early after a loose condition was plaguing him. Then he got caught up in the Sheldon Creed Sammy Smith incident. Well, despite that, he still finds himself in the top eight running in the closing laps of today's race. The report before that stopped loose everywhere. You saw the sticker tires go on. Those are, in fact, his last set of sticker tires. As we look to this restart, he said for him, it's not necessarily the launch. It's what he does with the first lap after the restart. Dave. Kim, what a crazy day for the regular season championship leader coming into this Austin Hill in the 21. John Hunter Nemechek has swept the stages and he has closed the gap. It's only seven points now as they run. Justin Allgaier having his troubles. He may be out of it where he is one lap down at this point. It's been quiet, but it's been better. He was so loose in practice this morning. They've tightened the car up and now Austin Hill is right there starting on the outside of row two for this restart, Rick. Seven points, seven positions. Boston Hill falls back at all. John Hunter Nemechek right there on the front row looking for another win on the season. Again, Parker Kligerman as far as the final spot based on points, 32 to the good ahead of Riley Hurts. Back under green. John Hunter Nemechek with a great restart. Josh Berry falls back a bit now, and he's in jeopardy of losing second to Austin Hill in the 21. Going to battle side by side down the back straightaway. Side draft for Barry. The bottom at three and four has been good, but Barry misses the bottom of the corner. Loose, chasing the car up the racetrack. Austin Hill still there on the outside. Those two say side by side as they go into turn number one. Now Barry with the advantage. But Hill's not giving him any room. Josh Berry's car has really good speed taken off. John Hunter got away from him on the longer run. Let's see what he can do now. See the nine car getting by the 48. Man. It's broken, man. See any smoke. Brandon Jones coming on here the last couple of laps. Washington's out. Oh, we got a car spinning around. Yep, it looks like the 45 around once again. So Raja Kuru issues on the apron now. Oh, the drivers did a good job. Always makes me nervous when they slide up the track, driver side to traffic. You can hear the flat tires. Frustrating day for Raja. That's the third spin on the day. Let's see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Let's see what's going on here. Can't really tell where he's at. Oh, he gets turned. Thought he might have been clear. Comes up the racetrack, not clear. So right here. He's gonna try to get in behind that 53. There's not room there. Tenth caution of the day has come out at Kansas on this, the last race of the regular season for the Xfinity Series. Playoffs begin next week. Friday night on USA and the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs will begin. It's under the lights at Bristol Motor Speedway. First chance for these drivers to win and advance. Race coverage beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Junior, what do you think you're going to be doing uh, during that race? I don't know. Racing? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I'm... Be honest, did you forget? I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. You didn't forget, did you? Yeah, no. I, I feel like he thought that was a trick question of some sort. <laughs> I know, yeah. I'm like, what, what, are you, what are you asking me? Like, Rick knows something I don't? I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to not get nervous about, about this. Okay. I always, always sort of, my wife will tell you, like a month before I'm gonna drive a race car, I get really nervous and get hard to be around, but been doing better for this this trip at least but are you you're not nervous about qualifying again are you because God, i know last about, time I'm you were so nervous, nervous about qualifying yes okay you're messing with me no i'm not i'm not trying to mess with you i just it's, i know well, if you you're not nervous. trying you're doing a heck of a job i'll tell you that 
Well, it will be fun to watch you back behind the wheel. Kim. Well, Patrick Donahue calls the shots for Parker Clearman. You guys have had a great race. He said it's not over yet. Parker's in the fifth position. You guys have gotten stage points all throughout the race. What does he need to do in these last 52 laps? Uh, just be smart. We keep the tires and the fenders on it and don't have any mechanical problems. I think we can get out of here and close the deal. The guys have done a great job preparing, and the cars had good speed all day. And uh, I, I think all we've done is adjust air pressure, and pit stops have been good. So hopefully we get out of here in the next 50 laps and, and uh, go race at Bristol. Restarts are crazy here at Kansas. As you look at this next one, what are you hoping for Parker? Uh, come off turn two. <laughs> there you have it. Dave? I'm sure that's what Ben Bashar wants as well with his driver, who's been mowing him down out there. Uh, any more concerns with that vibration earlier? No, we think we uh, we found what it was in the last stop. There was a lug nut jammed in between the wheel and the caliper. Luckily, it was just enough that it sort of clearanced itself over over 20 laps. So I, I think we're okay now. Wow, and you can see that regular season championship too, right? Sweeping the stages. Uh, yeah, I, it all probably depends on uh, if we can finish this thing out in front, and maybe the 21 loses a few more spots. But yeah, we're just we're just going to keep plugging away one lap at a time and uh, see what it gives us. Charging as hard as they can. And by the way, Riley Herbst in the 98 back on pit road, and he had to make some changes to that car. The right front of the splitter was gone on the car, he said. It was just flapping around that fender, and that's why he had to come back down. Felt like he was going to crash. Yeah, I mean, the 98 at this point, it's, you know, you just got to get the thing to the finish line. You need to make sure that the, it, you know, you have to force the 48 to finish is the point, right? You can't can't take yourself out of the race it just hasn't been what they want i think the 48 i agree with the crew chief that says hey i want to just kind of roll around to the restart but the one thing i would say about the 48 is on points fine but i have a little concern for them with the speed of the nine that last restart he gained a few spots now he's up here in the front a couple rows he's won here a couple times brandon jones this could be the the moment flash back to those wins he was in the 19 at the time and back in 2019 Randy Jones got win number one here at Kansas and then the following year right back to victory lane we know he's good he knows how to get to victory lane can oh. he do it today to win his way into the playoffs the only thing I don't love is they're in the bottom groove you know that bottom groove it's harder to make gains on that bottom groove that top is a preferred line off into turn one you got a lot of room um, on the bottom you don't have a lot of room and there's less grip and you're in a deficient uh, efficiency arrow wise because the cars on the outside are taking away some of that side force so the first car on the inside is not in such a bad spot but everyone behind him the further back you go the 11 26 27 those guys got to got to get pretty creative to make that bottom work the key for Brandon Jones is to push that eight car, Josh Berry, in a way that allows him to move forward, not get his rear tires spinning. Back underway. A little bit of bumping there from the eight and 21. John Hunter Nemechek's going to clear easily for the lead. Barry falls into second behind him, side by side for third. Here comes Parker Klingerman with a push to the back bumper of the 21 car. Yeah, Brandon had a good run, but Parker got up behind the 21 and pushed him by him on the back straightaway. Here he goes again, the nine car underneath the 21. He'll drift it up the track a bit, but now he fights back. Brandon Jones. Trying to make that inside line work for him, and he's going to clear the 21. He did a really good job down there to make that work. Into third place for Brandon Jones. Here comes Parker Kligerman. So the 21 losing a few spots here. That does affect the regular season points with Nemechek out front. Will the 21 continue to lose spots? Can he even it out here? He fights off Parker Kligerman there for fourth. Parker back to the inside. Brandon Jones, time by side with the nine car down the back straightaway. The fight for second has been won by Brandon Jones. He is up to second now. 
And he'll try to run down that 20 of John Hunter Nemechek. And this nine car has been backwards a couple times, had all kinds of issues, and here he is all the way up to second with 47 to go. And even with the pass that he just made, he was faster than John Hunter Nemechek. How hungry is Brandon Jones right now? Looking for his first win with Junior Motorsports. And it's going to take a win for him to get into the playoffs. Well, it's going to take a lot of speed, too. John Hunter Nemechek has dominated this race. He and his crew chief, Ben Bayshore, have been a great matchup at Joe Gibbs Racing. And that time, he was a tenth of a second faster than Brandon Jones. And when we talked to Brandon Jones during our countdown to Green Show, he said that it was a lot less stressful this race because there's only one scenario, and that is win. When you're in that situation where you can't point your way in, your focus is just one thing, and that's to get to victory lane. He's got to find the speed, though. Nemechek's been out front most of this race. One thing of note, Jones does not have any sticker tires left. So if we see a caution, the best set of scuffs they had is 30 lap scuffs. We'll see how the rest of the 45 laps in this race play out. Well, Kevin, if it's 30 lap scuffs, that tells me a caution, and that basically ends the chance of the nine to win the race. Old tires here are, are just not going to keep up with new tires. It's because he spun out and used that set earlier off turn four. Austin Hill able to work his way back around. Kligerman there for fourth place. Twenty-one car struggled a little bit on that restart, but it seems like the pace is back, and he's going to try to race and run down the Ada Berry. Right there in front of him. The top seven, actually eight now, are all separated pretty evenly around the racetrack. Yeah, except Nemechek. Nemechek's way out in front. Yeah, and he's running some great laps right then, almost four tenths quicker than the field. 27 car of Jeff Burton had problems off turn two, had to check up big time, and all these cars coming from behind at a high rate of pe speed. Derek Krause in that 11 car, I just, he's done a really nice job today. Had good speed, stayed out of trouble, avoided incidences on restarts. Just a good outing for him. Oh, right here, man. That's really tight. tight. <laughs> yeah, Jeb just cannot get off the corners. Like, his entry speed's fine, but it just, car will not roll on corner exit. Chaz Grawl is going to get up behind his 31 and get him loose up off the bottom of the racetrack. Red's laughs there. They're, they're fighting for ninth place. All guy right in the mix there as well. He is the first car, or highest scored car lap down. As we're watching this great racing right here, the battle for the lead has not changed. Same distance. These guys are just going at it. Al got our first car lap down. Damage to his car does not have the speed he had before, but. They're not going to quit fighting. The team doesn't know how to quit. See Burton coming down on Allgaier. Burton trying to clear him on the high side. Austin Hill has closed the gap to Josh Berry in third as we're watching the battle between Kligerman and Moffitt warming up a little bit. And you're bobbing the screen is the 21 and the 8. Here's Barry running the top of the racetrack. Austin Hills ran him down. Now he has to figure out how to get around this 8 car. It's going to be tough to do on the bottom of the racetrack. But this is the line he's been running into the racetrack at the high line and turning down on corner exit, making up a lot of ground on corner exit, running that lower line. Car length separating the two. See that line right there? He does a good job of being able to get off the corner that way. The eight has to lift a little bit late exit. That allows the 21 to side draft and then make the, make the pass. Now Austin Hill up into third. He's got a ways to go to catch Jones. And behind them, see this great shot right here. You can see Brett Moffitt in a battle with Parker Kligerman. Red Moffat doing a great job today also in sixth place.
top tens in the last three races here. Won a truck race back in 2020. So always has good pace here. Thirty-eight laps to go, Rick. The longest green flag run we've seen today has been 35 laps. 15 laps on the tires, you know, so this race continues green. That's really the key to all these guys is really, you know, you have to push, keep your car in good position, but also I mean, manage your car and your tires the best you can. That's what's going to be the difference maker here is the last 15 laps of this race. Who has grip left in their tire to continue to run with confidence around the top? Josh Williams running right there about 12. Joe Graff Jr. and Williams fighting for spots. Josh Williams got his best ever Xfinity finish here. Finished six in 2020. Fun guy to talk to. Saw him at dinner last night. Yeah, he yelled at us that he thought we should buy his dinner. We thought. He should buy ours. <laughs> we want to go through the field. Let's talk about the playoff drivers. We'll start with Dave and the 20. Yeah, Rick, let's look ahead just a little bit. What to expect coming up starting at Bristol next week. And I think you could expect this car and this driver to be very good. He's shown his dominance here today. Five wins on the season and even a little bit of luck. You heard his crew chief explain how that vibration could have been much worse if it was a fraction of an inch different. And it was not. As for the 21 of Austin Hill, this car, this driver, have been strong, have been dominant. This was not their weekend. They were pouring over data this morning when I went to talk to Crew Chief Andy Street, trying to figure out how to make this car better. Bristol should be a better week for them to get started. They've got four wins on the weekend. Josh Berry, will he come around? Still looking for a win this season and that good lately, but th th this weekend has brought the car around. The car was not great, but they have adjusted on this car and gotten to where it is better. Kim? Parker Quigerman currently running in the fifth position, and as it stands, he has that final playoff spot, plus 29. But in addition to finding that playoff spot, one thing they wanted to work on this weekend, and Parker's talked about it all week, is stage points. That's been their weak point throughout the entire season. In fact, he told me and Steve Latart earlier this week that they are the kings of 11th place finishes in the stages. They knew that had to change here today. Mission accomplished. They got points in both stages, and in fact, overall have had speed all weekend. That is a bright spot as they prepare for Parker's first playoff run. Then we have Sheldon Creed running in the seventh position. Four straight top tens for Sheldon Creed. And I asked crew chief Jeff Stankiewicz, what's been the reason for that? Because we saw a little bit of a slump during the summer for this team. And Jeff said, yes, we had a slump, but we're now back on track. And a lot of that has to do with Sheldon changing his approach, trying his best not to put himself in compromising situations. They know that's what they have to do to advance in the playoffs is be smart. So that's what they were hoping here today. Sheldon Creed, Dave running in the seventh position. The playoffs are coming for Jeb Burton. He runs ninth, and this car is looking for speed on the mile and a half. So I think they found some today. But the problem is there's not a drafting track in the playoffs. That is Jeb's specialty. No Talladega, no Daytona. So guess what? They have circled Bristol. Also a great track for Jeb Burton. He could start off the playoffs very well next week. Next car on the track. Next car in the playoffs, Justin Allgaier. Trouble today, contact on the track. He still runs a lap down, but you know, talking to crew chiefs this weekend, they're looking at this car for speed. They know they have a veteran driver behind the wheel of the seven, and they know they'll be dangerous in the playoffs. Can Riley Herbst get there? It's looking dimmer and dimmer for the driver of the 98 car. The 24-year-old has gone through so much today trying to get that car back in contention. He still runs two laps down right now, the right front holding on on that Mustang. Holding on is not the way you want to kick off the playoffs or at least in the regular season, but that's what's happening. Playoff schedule you see on the left side of your screen, Bristol, Texas, and the Charlotte Roval make up the first round for the Xfinity Series. Then it's Las Vegas, Miami, and Martinsville determines who the championship four will be for Phoenix November 4th. As we see this 20 continue to run great laps leading this race. You know, five wins on the season. And really looks to be in playoff form. I mean, won both stages. That's a couple playoff points. If he could win the race. I mean, 
everything you're expecting out of this 20 we're seeing here today. And when I look at that playoff schedule of tracks, I just don't see a track uh, that Nemechek has to be super concerned about, right? Maybe the Roval would, but I mean, to be honest, this 20 kind of shows up each and every week. I, I think the, the biggest thing with this 20 car is when they get into the playoffs, speed is not a concern. But what we've seen in the past, John Henry Nemechek racing in the truck series, racing for championships, he's pushed a little too hard, got himself in trouble. And that has been the problem. But I see a different John Hunter this year. I see a more mature, a more calculative. I think he's smarter. And he's applying all those lessons. But going into it, that to me is the focus for this team. Keep the speed up, minimize the mistakes. Then Bayshore watching on and others watching on. Uh, we mentioned earlier how these drivers, both the Xfinity Series and Cup Series, are honoring cancer heroes. Well, the name on the side of the 20 is Tom Goddard. He was nominated by Jamie Goddard. Jamie said, he was the hero not only to me while growing up, but also to my mom, sister, and brother when he was diagnosed with cancer. It made him a superhero, how he navigated all the treatments he was put through. And they asked, why did you select John Hunter Nemechek for Tom's name to be on that car? The John Hunter's kindness and determination reminds me of my dad. And so that's the cancer hero right along right now with John Hunter Nemechek here in the Xfinity Series race. Austin Hill back in third. Talk about drivers moving up. But this guy here has made the announcement that he's going to stick around. All the other competitors were sad to hear that because he's actually turned into quite the competitor in this series. When Austin came into the Xfinity Series, we all knew he was really great at the restricted plate tracks, Daytona and Talladega. Really great at Atlanta with a new configuration there. But we weren't really sure what kind of driver he was otherwise, and he has developed a lot. He's with a he's with an organization that's good enough to help him survive some of the adversity that you go through as you do develop. Great pit crew, been able to gain him a lot of spots on pit road, and he's turned into a bit of a closer. Might not start the race with the most speed, might not start the first stage with the best track position, but they find it. They get it on pit road, or he gets it late in the race on the racetrack. And now, He's running great everywhere. Awesome last week at Darlington, a driver's racetrack. This 21, I know they're they're going to possibly win the regular season points today. He's had a great season. I did not see that coming in this year. He is he has absolutely taken the, the challenge of winning this championship to Nemechek. I thought Nemechek was a clear favorite this year to win this championship, but now he's got company. Speaking of company, Creed and Moffitt, those two are tight right now for the sixth position. Creed has it. Moffitt right on his back bumper. It was a nice pass right there by Sheldon Creed. Did a really good job of just kind of slide jobbing a little bit. Putting Moffitt in a position where he had to lift. And you talk about that 21 car, Richard Childress racing. His teammate, Sheldon Creed, he's going to make the playoffs. And what Sheldon Creed do we see? The race, the, the Sheldon we've seen lately is avoiding problems, connecting the dots, finishing races. That's the Sheldon Creed we need to see going into these playoffs. If they do that, they have enough speed to apply some pressure to some teams and advance themselves through it. And again, right behind him is Moffitt, who just lost that spot, Kim. And how about what Brett Moffitt has been able to do for this AM racing team this season? A small team. Remember, he got that fourth place finish at Chicago, which marks the first ever top five finish for the team in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. But then they were on a little bit of a roller coaster. So the goal for these next handful of races, Brett said the tracks were really good for him. It was to level things out. And remember, I talked earlier about the confidence he had here because of the top 10 finishes he had in three of his four starts at Kansas. Well, I mentioned that to him, and he said, Running in the top 10 all day is the goal. If that happens, then their aim is the top five. Currently, he sits in the seventh position, just two spots from the ultimate goal for that team here today at Kansas. Remember, Brett Moffitt is a driver that, you know, during COVID broke both legs yeah. in a motocross accident. I mean, <laughs> uh, I've talked about it a few times. and it, I mean, it's just a, a really serious, gruesome injury as we see a big wiggle out of the eight right there in the 48 but you know to see brett moffitt even really in a race car i mean you forget about such a serious injury parker okay 
Parker. <laughs> I, I want a shot of Patrick Donahue right oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> Chief. I wish he was wearing like one of those wearables we could check his heart rate because right there it probably went through the look at him. I know Patrick very well and that face is trying not to look you see the little head yeah. shake right there. Oh, no, that gosh. was the one. Don't show it. I know they're shooting me on camera. Don't show your emotion. And finally we got the little head shake of what is he doing out there? He's passing. He's going to the front. Up to fourth for Parker Kligerman. Race car drivers, Rick. Race car drivers. How about Parker Kligerman and this team going into the playoffs? You know, we're talking about every team. Let's assume, I hate to do that, but let's just think for a moment that they're going to make the playoffs. This team has brought a ton of consistency in the last couple months. They've executed. They, got, they ran well last week, got spun out. That was none of their doing. But they have executed races as well as anybody. A little bit of problem with pit crew. They've done really, been really solid today. But this team, if they can get themselves into playoffs and this thing finishes out, I think they're dangerous. I don't think they have the speed that Nemechek or Jones has. But what they do have is consistency, and they're working very well together as a team. Remember in pre-race, he brought up the championship four. He was already looking forward to that, knowing and confident that they could be that type of a team. And, and doesn't this make them better? You know, I think now, if they can get through this, they can look at each other and say, hey, we answered the call in a big moment. We found a way to get this done and also run fast and run it four. And I just think that makes them that much more dangerous. Well, and the other layer I'll add to this is this team gets a lot of help from Richard Childress Racing. Uh, and when you look at the current running order, Right, you have the 20, which is a Gibbs Toyota, the 9, which is a Junior Motorsports Chevrolet. And then you have Austin Hill out of the RCR camp, and then Kligerman. So, so I say that because he's outrunning the 2 of Creed, which is a, a house car for RCR. The college cars are also in that same technical alliance. So when it comes down to nuts and bolts is one thing, but now this is people and the human element, and the 48 is finding a way to outrun those that have reasonably the same equipment. Kim. We talk about Parker's consistency recently, only three finishes outside the top 10 in the last 11 races. They've had speed, they've executed well, just been caught up in a few mistakes that were not their own. So I asked Parker earlier today before he climbed aboard the car, okay, give me one word if you miss the playoffs. He said disappointment. But then I said, give me one word if you make the playoffs. And he said, expected. He was calling his shot. He had the confidence in the team that they could get it done today and find themselves in that final playoff position. Playoffs are going to be a blast, Rick. I mean, just like this race was nearly impossible to predict, I think that's what we're going to see over that. You just showed the schedule, the group of tracks. I know they don't have Talladega in their schedule like the cup cars do, but, you, you know, there are so many ups and downs over the course of the Xfinity Series playoffs with the Roval and Bristol and so many opportunities. Parker Kligerman, uh, if he continues on this path, will get a playoff point because he because he will be 10th in the regular season standings. So that's another playoff point or a, a playoff point that he can carry on into the playoffs with him. That's the big battle right now that's still going on is the regular season championship between the 21 and 20. It's still separated by seven points. So Austin Hill running third right now has a seven point advantage over the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek for the regular season championship with Chief. He will get 15 playoff points if the 21 is able to continue on and win the regular season championship. Those are huge when you're trying to get to Phoenix. Watching the lap times on the racetrack, Parker Klingerman is running a little bit quicker than Austin Hill. It's a couple seconds behind, but could run him down. Just a few laps to go. It's a battle right here for 10th place between Graf Jr. and the 19 on the inside, the black car, and Jeb Burton right there in that 27. Sliding up the racetrack. But Parker is only about 10, 15 car lengths behind the 21. And for the last couple of laps, at least two tenths, sometimes three faster than Austin Hill. Now, how do you manage that, right? You're, you're, you're driving to assured spot in the playoffs but you got a car out there in front of you you can go catch that's always fun too <laughs> well we know how competitive parker is and i'm sure he's going to try to reel him in austin hill again just in front of parker kligerman dave 
and Rick, he was being kept uh, appraised of what was going on with the 20 of John Hunter Nemechek, told how many points he was ahead, but also told he didn't have to save fuel anymore. So a lot of the drivers were. This got right in the final fuel window for many teams, but he's good on fuel too, so it looks like he's uh, just losing time to Parker on pure pace. So we just have to remember, I think everybody's good on fuel, but as great as this run is by Parker Kligerman, the only thing that's holding Brandon Jones out of the playoffs right now is John Hunter Nemechek leading this race. Now, I know the gap is over five seconds, but he's in traffic. He's running the top. You, you know, this is anything but a straightforward event for the leader. Now, John Hunter's doing an amazing job, but so Brandon Jones has at least put himself back into the competition here with 11, or into the conversation with 11 laps to go. Um, you know, We've seen crazier thing happen, so we'll just have to see. I don't want to quite award the 48 the playoffs yet. Oh no, anything can happen. Yeah. Junior, you, you talked about you talked about the 48 of Kligerman and the pace he's got. Let's look what he's doing. So he's changed the way he's approaching this racetrack. So at most everybody is running on the corner exit really high up against the wall. Parker, watch what he does. Clears that car, goes straight to the top, right? Straight to the top runs the top lane, and now he waits on the throttle, gets the car pointed, goes to the throttle, turns it down the hill, and leaves closer to the bottom. And that is working for him. That has helped his car. Now, other people are not having success doing that, but every car drives different. And you have to be willing to search. You have to be willing to look things differently and try something. And look, even off turn four, leaves way on the bottom and he is making big gains on the 21 by doing it that's 21 right there in front of him so with nine laps to go parker klingerman in heavy traffic right here has an opportunity not necessarily needing to gain this position so it's a bit of a you know risk versus reward here you're locked into the playoffs if the race finish as is this really early right there trying to get some clean air so he can finish the corner. Well, this battle is dragging the two of Sheldon Creed into this battle as well. If I'm Patrick Donahue, the crew chief, I'm not wanting to battle. I'm just saying, hey, man, if the two gets to you, just, just let him go. This, we don't need this spot. He's so much faster. Look how he did that, though. He lifted really, really early to finish the corner, ran right back up we over 21. We don't need any spots. You're doing great. <laughs> like, we don't need any spots. So, yes, yeah, so the, tw the two's coming from behind. That may occupy him a little bit. But Austin Hill has adjusted his line. He was told or saw what the 48 was doing. Now look what he's doing. He's leaving the corner much lower, but he's sideways. The back of that car is not in the racetrack. Parker's, Parker's best finish this, this year already is second. So I just want to bring, you know, seven laps to go. We are right on the edge of their fuel window. I expect all these drivers to make it, but just remember, they don't have quite as much information as the cup cars do that, that with the electronic fuel injection. This is old school with the carburetor. I mean, everybody's on red when it comes to fuel. So you just, you know, anything can happen. We watched Chase Elliott run out of gas at yep. Watkins Glen from one of the biggest organizations with all the information. So it can happen. Let him go. We're good. Five yep. to go. Let him go. Two of You're three. You'll get the 21. <laughs> he gets by Parker, and you heard... Crew chief right there saying, let him go. Well, Sheldon Creed, he's got a lot of speed. We talked about those guys running lower on corner exit. Sheldon's right up against the board, and that's working for him. These are teammates. We'll see how much Austin Hill puts up a fight now as Creed has got to his back bumper. Well, you see on the bottom left, we talked a lot about Patch Donahue, the crew chief. Well, here's Scott Borchetta. That's the owner of this 48 team, Big Machine Records. Uh, he's the sponsor on the car. An avid racer himself was in a really severe accident this spring. We saw him at Nashville, his hometown, recovering from the accident. It's great to see Scott on the race, or back to the racetrack, and it's great to see Scott with the nerves. I mean, this is a man who's found huge success in the music business, uh, but he's looking on as a very nervous owner with five laps to go. Thinking his driver and car are gonna make the playoffs. And that's what the Xfinity Series is about. An owner like Scott Rochetta coming in and taking the fight to Joe Gibbs Racing, taking the fight to, to you, Junior at Junior Motorsports, Richard Childress Racing. That's what has built this Xfinity Series. It's those teams like that have a great deal of appreciation for Scott and owners just like him. Creed, 11 seconds behind Nemechek. 
and Nemechek is six and a half seconds in front of Jones still with under four laps to go. Now three remaining for John Hunter Nemechek. Steve, you, you've thrown that out there, the possibility of fuel. We had said at the beginning, fuel window was approximately 60 laps. They came to pit road right at 140. There was a caution lap or two there before the green flag came out, but that's right at that 60 laps. Yeah, we haven't heard a lot of chatter out of most cars. We're hearing a little chatter that the two might have to come to pit road. We'll keep an eye on that. But the 48 seems to be confident in their fuel situation. The 20 is the same. Here's the 48 putting a little mini slider on the 21. Hand out the window saying thanks. I think the 21 has said, man, great job. We got the playoffs ahead. I'm going to start banking some, yeah. some good breaks. Hey, man, I'm going to help you on your stressful day. Remember me. Remember me when we get into the playoffs. Yeah. Don't forget about what I just did there. They don't ever remember. <laughs> they don't remember that kind of stuff, I'm sure. One lap to go, presented by Credit One Bank. John Hunter Nemechek, a mile and a half away from his sixth win of the 2023 campaign. John Hunter Nemechek doing all he can and the best that he could. He won stage one, he won stage two. But Austin Hill also doing a magnificent job. And Austin Hill, where he's running, is going to end up the regular season champion. But Kansas winner is going to be John Hunter Nemechek. John Hunter Nemechek gets the win. Brandon Jones, because he wasn't able to win, won't be in the playoffs in 2023. Sheldon Creed finishes third. Kligerman fourth. And by points will be in the playoffs. Austin Hill, regular season champion with his fifth place finish. And Toyota now celebrating their 200th Xfinity Series win. What a milestone for that organization. Thank you. John Hunter Nemechek, as far as the championship goes, favorite? I think he was a favorite when the season started. Uh, we got a lot of mile and a half tracks in this playoffs. Phoenix, they'll be great. He will be hard to beat. And uh, I think the odds are in his favor. John Hunter Nemechek with just his eighth career win. You mentioned sixth already this season. really figured out how to do great burnouts. <laughs> John Hunter Nemechek would move over to Legacy Motor Club in 2024 run in the Cup Series. But he's got unfinished business in the Xfinity Series right now. A championship in front of him. His sixth win already in 2023, Kim. And what a week it has been for John Hunter Nemechek. We get the news that he's going to be moving up to the Cup Series again in 2024, but he had some business to do here today. Dominating fashion, getting your sixth win on the season. You win both stages, lead 154 laps. Is this what championship form looks like for this team? And does this make you the favorite? Uh, I don't know if it makes us a favorite or not, but uh, super proud of this whole 20 team, Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, 
man, it's uh, it's been a week. Um, it, it's been an exciting week, but I'm um, super pumped to get Pi Barker uh, Toyota GR Supra back in victory lane. Um, this thing was as fast as Xfinity 10G today. Uh, ben and all the guys made the right adjustments all day. They brought a really fast hot rod and uh, have to say uh, hi to Tay, Aspen, and Penelope back home. Uh, I wish that they were here. Um, we'll celebrate when I get home, but we have another name. Uh, uh, someone who we lost to cancer, Tom Goddard, um, on our car this weekend. So a uh, special name for, for the, those that know. Um, but overall, just super pumped, super ecstatic. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting the playoffs started next week at Bristol. We came in here today trying to get the regular season championship, and I said that we were going to have a 60-point day this weekend, and that's what we did. We controlled what we can control, and uh, we did everything that we possibly could. So let's go to the playoffs. I'm ready. Congratulations. Thank you. Big day for John Hunter Nemechek. Big day for Parker Kligerman. Dave has caught up with him. And Kimmy you told us a story earlier. His one word, if he got into the playoffs, was expected. Welcome to the playoffs. Thank you very much. That's a very satisfying feeling. I was definitely the biggest John Hunter fan uh, in the last <laughs> run there. Uh, seeing the nine be so fast in that last run, but I'm really proud of this whole big machine racing team. They brought a really good spike light core Chevy, uh, as we showed throughout this race. And we executed a high level, and that's what I've seen us do for the last 12 weeks. I felt like if we could just get in the playoffs and we bring this going forward, uh, we're going to go race for a championship. But thank you to Scott Borchetta, Sandy Borchetta, everyone who makes this possible. What an honor to, to uh, you know, get the first playoff berth for this race team. Uh, we had a special pe uh, person on board, Beth Cunningham, who the Cunninghams mean a lot to me. She's battling cancer, but obviously having a Cunningham on board for a race car that had a big day. Uh, I know who was watching over me in the Cunningham family. So um, overall, just a really solid day where we executed a high level. And if we do that in the next, what, eight weeks, we got a chance at this thing. He has a chance to go deep. We'll see him working on pit road tomorrow. His side job, Rick, after winning fourth place today and into the playoffs. <laughs> well, it's official. There are 12 drivers that all have a chance at getting that championship. Now, John Hunter Nemechek heading to the Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane, where the celebration will continue. Take a look at the point standings. Playoffs, after you reset to 2,000, all the drivers, and then add the playoff points that they have earned throughout the season. John Hunter Nemechek with a 10-point advantage over Austin Hill. Brad Doherty, let's bring you back in to talk playoffs. Yes, sir. I think it was an outstanding day. I, I really am uh, impressed with the composure that Parker showed and his race team. I mean, he just went out and executed. That entire team executed flawlessly, put him in great position, take advantage of his opportunities, and uh, kudos to those guys. It was a fun race. A lot of wreck race cars early on, but in the end, John Hunter Nemechek was dominant, and Parker took care of business. And as Parker is now in the playoffs, that means the driver is out. Let's hear from Riley He's with Kim. Yeah, Riley Herbs unfortunately won't make the playoffs. Multiple issues all day long. How do you walk away from Kansas? What's the feeling? Uh, I honestly feel like we had one of the fastest cars out here today. Um, and I feel like we just were one of the fastest 12 cars all year. Um, we just weren't good enough today. I, I feel like we were good enough, though. That's what's frustrating. I just don't think we executed. Um, on that restart, I don't really know what happened. They all got stacked up. I don't know if somebody missed the gear or, or spun the tires, but at that point, our, our day was kind of in a big hole. But thank you to Monster Energy, Stuart Haas Racing, and everybody who supports us. I feel like we can go now and try to win races. I told Dave Burns this morning that was my ultimate goal this year. Uh, it obviously was a championship. That's everybody's goal when you get to Daytona in February. But I, I didn't really care about rounds or playoffs or how far we went. I, I wanted to win races, and... Um, I wanted to get better as a race car driver, and I still feel like we have eight, seven races left to go do that. And um, so I don't think we're going to quit working by any means, and I think we're going to hopefully end up in victory lane by the year's over. We can see what Herbst and this team can do in the seven races day. Kim, I'm standing by with regular season champion Austin Hill, but I know it was a challenging day. What was going through your head? Well, John Hunter was doing his thing, and you were struggling. Yeah, we just struggled all day with the balance of our Bennett Chevrolet. Um, definitely wasn't as fast as Xfinity 10G today, but, um, you know, we persevered. We d dug deep. Um, not even sure how we finished in the top five there. Uh, you know, we'd fire off, and it would be decent on fire off. We didn't have the greatest fire off speed, but it wasn't terrible. And then, man, once we got, you know, 20 laps into a run, it would really start falling on its face. There at the end, I was just really loose on entry, sliding fronts and, and really four-wheel sliding through across the middle. Then I had no right rear grip on exit. So, 
uh, was really fighting the balance on this 21 car today. But, um, but I mean, you know, us getting the regular season championship just shows that, um, you know, no matter how tough the battle is and how tough the up, uphill climb is, um, we never give up. We keep fighting. Uh, guys did an awesome job on pit road on gaining me spots. That helped um, the, our situation, and uh, we just had to go out there and, and just salvage what we could. But going into the playoffs, we, we have a lot of work to do to catch up to that 20. He was class of the field today, and um, so we just we got to be better come Bristol time. Congrats on the uh, regular season win. Rick, what's the old adage? How good do you make your bad days? They made something out of this. Well, it's going to be a great championship fight, and I can't wait for that to start. It's all happening next week. But before the Xfinity Series gets there, the Cup Series has the second race of the playoffs, and that is tomorrow on USA. Countdown to Green kicks us off at 2.30. 3 o'clock is the second race of the playoffs for the Cup Series, and then, of course, NASCAR America post-race on Peacock in USA. Well, it was John Hunter Nemechek ending up with a dominant performance. 154 laps led. Parker Kligerman did everything they needed to do with the 48 team. He's also going to be a part of the 12 driver playoff field. But John Hunter Nemechek grabs another win here at Kansas for the Xfinity Series.